It's round two of the Michelin Le Mans Cup and it brings us to a fabulous part of the world, northern Italy, Emilia Romagna to be exact, uh, how green these pastures are and uh, also the track just go it's like a roller coaster this place up and down dale very narrow in places and just about every corner that you could dream up we are slightly behind schedule ahead of this second race of the season but nevertheless an awesome grid of 40 cars assembling on the start finish straight we've already been to le castellet to circuit paul ricard for round one round two here at imola then the very special event two races during uh, the le mans week that form the road to le mans they'll be two 55 minute races one on thursday one on saturday morning and then the regular two hour or rather one hour and 50 minutes as they are now to complete the season another trip to, to italy to monza to spa and finally to portugal it's even warmer than it was for qualifying now ambient 30 degrees celsius 46 down at track level and pretty humid as well 38 degrees or 38 uh, percent i should say the wind has massively dropped so very still that's not to preventing an awful lot of pollen though being blown around particularly in the paddock area and one or two very wise teams have air blowers pointing outward from their hospitality suites to make sure that pollen isn't finding its way into the eating areas i really like that little touch all about keeping cool at the moment graham goodwin we're doing very nicely in our air-conditioned booth but if you're the driver assigned for the opening stint you just need to gather your thoughts because you're going to be at the wheel of these cars for about 50 minutes or so well you've got the advantage Johnny, good afternoon, everybody, from being unutterably cool to start with. Uh, but Thank the drivers you. don't have that uh, opportunity. It is 30 degrees up there. That's not snow. That's pollen you can see blowing across, or seeds rather, you can see blowing across the trees in seed at the moment. And they have been all week. And uh, you'll forgive me if I start to sound a little bit hoarse later because it's beginning to get on my chest a little. Uh, this is going to be a stunner. I have little doubt about it. This place is an amazing sports car racing track. It's great to be back uh, at uh, Imola. Uh, We've been be made very welcome here indeed. The surrounding countryside, as you saw from the heli shots earlier, is unutterably gorgeous. Uh, some fabulous photographic opportunities for public and professionals alike. And better still for those of you watching on the stream around the world on what's a very busy day and a busy weekend for international racing, um, you're going to get to watch all of it live and free right here. And we'll take you through every single move. Tenth on the grid, that is the racing spirit of Le Mans car, Josh Skelton and Jack Wolf. Uh, one of a number of Ligiers, Ligiers Duquesnes making up this 40 car grid, or rather the 30, 35, 31, apologies, 31 uh, LMP3 cars, plus one that's on an LMP chassis, but not an LMP3 car, we'll come to that. Yeah. Ninth on the grid is Dekar Engineering's car, number 14, and that's Alexander Pikansov and James Winslow aboard the Duquesne from the multiple championship winning team from Luxembourg. Yeah, so great to have them in situ. They haven't had to, it in their own way, certainly not uh, so far this season, as we concentrate now on Daniel Schneider of Brazil, going to be joined later on by Andy Merrick back with United Order Sports for another season so car 32 uh, due to start uh, in the midfield and it's about staying out of trouble for that crew but then this place is like something else really it's uh, winding the clock back uh, with yes uh, track limits are policed here but in some cases they don't need to be because you've got gravel just the other side of the white line Tony Wells and Colin Noble champions and the number seven crew are back for another season. Tony Wells to take the opening stint. And nicely placed here, um, if Tony can kind of retain that position, or indeed improve on it, for Colin Noble to want to do one of his trademark runs to the front a little later in the race. This is Team Thor, Team Thor, Arden Goodmanson, Michael Markison, our Atlantic friends. And again, one will on the air blowers there. It will be Auden to start the race and a great qualifying performance from the Icelandic driver the grid will pause for 
the national anthem of Italy, but we'll continue to chat about the fifth place car, Alexander Maxwell. He topped the qualifying time a little earlier on. These guys were winners in the opening round at Le Castellet, and Tom Dillman was just electric when he got behind the wheel of his LMP3 car. So certainly became favourites to take a championship potentially this year if they can keep that consistency. Freddie Hunt performed very well in qualifying earlier, yeah, to hustle that car to fourth position. He'll be joined by Mad Seilerhaug later on. We had to pause for that. You've got to pause for the national anthem of motorsport. Well, precisely. But we I missed mean, Let's catch up really quickly and talk like this. Go on, then. Well, it's a 37 CD Sport car, then the 11 W10 car, and here we are with the 29 car. Nicely done. And one of the most remarkable stories in a qualifying session uh, was... Uh, got a provisional pole position, lost provisional pole position to a track limits violation. That was wrongly adjudged. He then got the lap back, but by the time he got the lap back, he'd already been on the side of his teammate and was off into the gravel and uh, red flagged the session. By the way, well done to the uh, singer of the Italian National Anthem. There he is. Absolutely excellent. Excellent. Yeah, good to have it. Good to get a bit of exposure for him and expertly sung. And the group photographs will be taken as well. Interesting, wasn't it, that in the phase of that contact into Rivazza, it was presumably in Jerome de Sadelier's mind that he'd had a very good lap time deleted. So Correct. was that an element of frustration? I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Which was actually unnecessary in the end because he got that lap given back to him. But it was through the right-hand kink before they'd arrived at Rivazza that de Sadelier, new to the championship this year, Christoph Cresp, who's the other... Uh, driver in the, the sister car at MV2S, they made contact. What we haven't seen is the reverse angle of that incident, and I wonder how firmly Jerome de Sadelier was actually squeezed by his teammate onto the grass, which then caused the spin for the 29, T-boning the 28, and a bizarre moment where, in qualifying, two cars from the same team end up off the track, out of the session, in the gravel. Uh, about to witness history in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. Uh, whilst we have had hydrogen fuel cell cars compete elsewhere, we've never had one competing in a race uh, on the ACO, uh, an ACO rules race. Uh, it's about to change. Uh, this is the number 24 car, Stefan Riquelme and uh, Norman Nato. And this is the rolling test bed, if you like, for future technology that it is hoped in the coming years will feature in the battle for overall honours at the Le Mans 24 hours. In competitive terms, it started this afternoon with qualifying. It continues here with the very first race for the LMP3 chassis. It's an EDES chassis under there somewhere, uh, but a remarkably different package. What to expect from that car? They are aiming for GT3 type pace. Uh, we don't know how far the car will run on a tank of hydrogen. I don't think it will be competitive in terms of mileage. Uh, but big strides have been taken in the years that this car has been developed, including massive reduction in, way, uh, in uh, weight. Uh, it is quicker, it goes further, but there's a lot of work still to do. But another page in automotive and motorsport history gets turned today. Yeah, very exciting. And you can say you were here for the first ever race, away from the Bendham there, with the Michelin man. And he's ready to go as part of the Michelin Le Mans Cup. There's Alden, Alden Gubberson. Oh, yes, Alden himself, a team tour, raring to go from sixth position. Outside of the third row, he'll have Alexander Matchell to fight with, to arm wrestle with, into that first sequence of corners at Tamburello. Last year, Auden showed me some pictures taken from his, uh, his uh, upstairs window of the volcano, which looks like it's about two doors down. <laughs> I think it's the same for everybody in, in Iceland, but it is a delight to have him here. Tony Wells, defending champion, and they'll be looking to get back 
well, in the saddle, uh, unlucky last uh, last time out in that they'd gained a further position up to I think fourth or fifth uh, before uh, the race was reverted to the previous lap after unfortunately an error was made and the wrong car was flagged home. It was the car ahead of the, uh, the race winner and the rules come into play and that meant that we, we lost a lap that uh, cost them a place, it cost the bullet racing car a podium position unfortunately. Yeah, the Aston Martin that runs in GT3 uh, and uh, that would have been a cracking result first time out in ACO rules racing but let's see how the Spanish squad do in round two. This track, three miles, 4.9 kilometres, split into three sectors. The first two feel like they're quite short. Sector one runs to the entry into Villeneuve chicane. 21 corners around this place, would you believe? But there were one or two that are just little kinks that don't require braking, just a realignment of trajectory. Uh, the second sector runs from the entry to Villeneuve to the run down into Aqua Minerale and the whole of the final sector is from that point through Variante Alta, the two Rivazzas at the end of the lap and then across the line and if you can be fast particularly in that, that final sector that is key to a good lap time. Freddie Hunt with the instantly recognisable helmet livery is raring to go. Thumbs up from Freddie from fourth position and for Writer Engineering, a significant contract extension for yep. Freddie, uh, signed in the last few weeks. Yeah, I was having a quick chat with him after that uh, qualifying. He was disappointed his qualifying. I thought, I, I told him I thought he'd done excellently well. Good. Uh, five years uh, he's going to sign for for Writer Engineering in both uh, prototype and GT racing with their uh, KTM crossbow derivatives and GTX and GT2 and GT4 uh, versions. So I think we're going to be seeing the name of Freddie Hunt around for a little wee while. Something about his driving style, his outlook, the place he is in his life at the moment, I've never seen him more comfortable than I've seen him in this car. And I think we could see some good things from him. Yeah. I'm hoping that's not the commentator's curse, but uh, it's good to see uh, Freddie Hunt. Uh, here in this championship. It's great to see Writer Engineering here in this championship. Let's see what they can produce. We've got two hours, less 10 minutes of what is always spectacular racing in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. And thank you for joining us on, on what we said we know is a packed weekend of motorsports. I'm of the opinion it doesn't get much better than the LMS uh, package. It's, it's always entertaining. It's never, ever dull. And we get an hour and 50 minutes to start the weekend right now. Very good result for GMB Motorsport of Denmark with their new to the championship Honda NSXs. And it'll be uh, not one of those cars from pole position, but they do occupy uh, the first three spots on the outside of the grid. So the better of the three that qualified was the 44 to be started by Jens Moller alongside Emanuele Busnelli. Now, Ebi Motors home race, one of two home races that the Italians can enjoy in the European Le Mans series and the Michelin Le Mans Cup this year. Uh, we'll run through the whole grid now, actually, but Ebi Motors took pole position earlier on in GT3. So it's MV2S Forestier racing and Jerome de Sadelier to start alongside Leo Weiss for WTM. Second row, CD Sport, Fabian Michel and Freddie Hunt that we talked about for Writer Engineering. Fifth place for Alexander Matchell, race winners last time out, and Odin Goodmanson for Team Tour. And then Tony Wells and Daniel Schneider for Nielsen Racing. They're the champions and United Auto sports. DKR Engineering's Alexander Buchan soft starts uh, that very lurid paint scheme for the ninth place car and alongside it Jacques Wolf for Racing Spirit of Le Mans. Then it's Graf Racing's Louis saint joie and John Schaumann for United Auto Sports. Nielsen Racing's John Meltham had a slight off in qualifying alongside Patrice Lafargue for EDEC Sports and Cool Racing's Mo Smith, the American, joined by Alexander Tal Knitzer for AT Racing Team. RLRM Sports Martin Rich knew he was on a quick lap just before the session was Red flag, TS Corsa alongside Pietro Peccianini, John Brownson for DKR Engineering 19th, joined by Andres Latour for United, Optimum Motorsports Mark Crader 21st alongside Hegley by T2 Racing and Peter de Curtins. Then it's Sean Lynn's United Auto Sports number two car alongside Alexandre Vaughan for Team Virage. Rinaldi Racing's Steve Paro is joined by Klaus Avalon for Fricadelli Racing. And then Stefan Rupp for Graf Racing alongside Andrew Ferguson for 24-7 Motorsport. Crichton Lendudis, the Greek AF Corsa run alongside Rob Hodes 
from Team Virage. And then the GT3s, Emanuele Busnelli taking pole position in an all-bronze session, as were the P uh, P3s, in fact. Then Jens Moller in the first of three GMB Motorsports Hondas. Bullet racing, Aston Martin just missing out on the podium last time out. They start from third position alongside Christian Paulsen, and it's AF Corsa and GMB Motorsport on the next row of GT3s. The AF Corsa run, Marcus Vivian starts from 37th alongside the H24 Racing, Stefan Riquelme. And finally, the two cars at the back, neither of which posted a time, or at least they weren't times competitive. Christi Christoph Cresp, who was taken out by his teammate, or he took his teammate out, we never did to get a decision on that, but he ended up in the gravel. Car 28 starts from 39th. And finally, Jonathan Brossard, who brought the final of the two red flags out with just a minute and a half left on the clock. The session was not restarted after the ANS motorsport car left the road on the run out of Varianti Villeneuve. So they will be at the back of the pack. That might be red flag related, actually. I'm just looking to so see possibly exactly post session they had times why. taken away from them, but that wouldn't explain why Jerome de Sadelier got to keep his. No. Anyway, a minute to go board is now displayed to everybody assembled at the sharp end of the grid. The problem here at Imola is that the grid is almost in three different sections because of the various kinks on the main, in inverted commas, straight. So it's very tricky to see those uh, later instructions probably need repeaters part way down the grid, particularly for the lights. Yeah, it is a steward's decision, number 25, which hopefully has not been uploaded yet, but I'm guessing you're exactly right. Yeah. I suspect that uh, blame has been attributed for that incident. Yes, and suggested and maybe the 28 car, yeah. Christoph Cresp. And, and I, I did say to you at the time, we can't unfortunately see this incident from the reverse angle agree. Yeah. and work out whether Jerome de Sadley was being squeezed. So perhaps that was uh, assigned to Christoph Cresp, which he will recover from. And the MV2S Forestier Air Racing uh, car will have to do it very much the hard way from penultimate position on the grid. The formation lap commences now. Jerome de Sadelier is first away. Leo Weiss alongside. And uh, let's see what the difference in pace is between de Sadelier, who's new to the championship, and Weiss, who has a year's experience on it. Uh, also seeing that cars number 73, 6, 13 and 57 all get a drop of three positions uh, against some um, shoot decisions I'll just have a quick look at. So 73 is the TS Sport, uh, Sport car, the 13 is the T2 Racing, the Higeli car, 6, I'm trying to remind myself, is the ANS Motorsport car and 57 is which car? That's it. Uh, Graf Racing. It's Graf Racing Rook to start. So I'll have a quick look at see what those two decisions were while you keep talking. All right. Well, we've got one of each of the two prototypes on display in this championship, a Ligier and du a Duquesne. That bodes pretty well, perhaps, for the... Th there is no balance of performance in force in LMP3, but the cars were developed at the same time, so fingers crossed. Yes, there's the, the, the flip and uh, flop back and forth, depending on which is the better of the chassis. From a numbers point of view, Ligier do out outnumber Duquesne, but if we can have... You know, examples of the two different chassis represented in the top six, let's say, by the end, that would be a good showing. So the answer on those penalties uh, for this grid, uh, for certainly two of them, a couple of the decisions not yet uploaded, but I think we can guess it's probably the same, is that uh, they crossed the white line of exit twice. OK. And in the case of the two earlier decisions, that didn't even take part in free practice for the collective test. So they are stamping down on that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, the blend line on the exit of the pit lane it would have been made is clear. so... It's, yeah, yeah. it's such black and white, but I would say here at Imola, and there are other tracks that are similar, it's so important. It's because, very white, by the way, not black and white. So. Uh, uh, yeah, indeed. The, the line is white, but the, the, the judge of fact is black and white. Yes. Uh, the, the kink through uh, on the main start finish straight means you are approaching pit exit blindly and you are entirely reliant on a car as they rejoin to do so safely and to stay the correct side of the white line. It's like a concrete wall in one direction. You are allowed to cross it from right, from left to right if you're on the racing track, but it's, it's like a give-way system, effectively. And the last thing you want as you're 
pounding round Imola and uh, emerging from the pit wall is to see a car right in your way, still getting up to speed after a pit stop. Pit stops are mandatory in this race, but you only have to do one these days because of the shortened race. Um, we played about with an extra pit stop last year because of a, a worry that the engine wouldn't do, or rather the fuel burn, the fuel consumption for this new Nissan engine wouldn't do the distance, but we've now eliminated that issue. And, uh, nice to do it in an analogue way by just shortening the race by 10 minutes. Simple, isn't it? Everyone understands yeah. that. And uh, they've given, by the way, drivers a little bit more time in practice and so they're not losing out on track time. Here we go then. Time for round two. Game on. So, who will win in terms of Ligier and Duquesne? And is this going to be a stint long fight between Jerome de Sadelier, who is bronze rated, and Leo Weiss, who is silver? It's an interesting tactic from WTM Racing, Wachenspiegel Team Monschau Racing, to put their silver in for the opening stint. They will want a lead, certainly, on those cars around them by the end of this first stint. We are about to get racing, a little later than planned. Thank you for your patience and sticking with us. We'll be racing to gone half past seven tonight because of this. Still, the red lights are on, and now they go out, and round two of the Michelin Le Mans Cup for 2022 is on the way here at Imola. It is a good getaway for Jerome de Sadelier in the green and black car, and now Leo Weiss wants to ideally get ahead of Fabian Michel, but he can't do it, has to slot into third position, so loses a place net in GT. Bullet it racing up the inside of the pole sitter Busnelli and there was also a JMB motorsport car probably Jens Muller who has taken the GT3 race lead green flags being waved in the background can't see any yellows though before that so so far so good in that everyone has got through Tamburello and Villeneuve safely this is a bit of a pinch point though at Toza on the opening lap to the inside car 69 which was who on this for this opening stint try and work that out in a moment but the race leader is Andrew Ferguson no it's not um, okay. it's like timing glitch there timing's got a right it so has, we just rather. have to do that visually I'm afraid so the race leader is Jerome oh. de Sadelier but we've got the 33 off. off the road de Sadelier leads from Leo Weiss Fabian Michel slotted through into third that's Rob Hodes and Freddie Hunt is in fourth position but Rod Hodes is already off the road and that is at turn seven which is Tozer I told you that was a pinch point and the yellow flags, at least locally, are out to warn everybody else of the problems there. Puff of tyre smoke as one car goes right over the kerbing, which may well have been John Melson in the number four Nielsen racing car. So, De Sadelier leading the way after a very good getaway. Leo Weiss, I reckon, slotted into third position behind Fabian Michel. That's Martin Rich on the hunt. On Melson, yeah. yeah. So, 53 ahead of four. And there's an argument that says Martin Rich is a little out of position because I think he told you after the qualifying that he was about two seconds up on his yep, delta was. as the red flags came out. We are going to go safety car because of yeah. the stranded Rob Hodes car in the Toza Gravel, turn seven. Looks as well, by the way, says the 72 did, but a bad start for, uh, for Team Virage in the pit. Uh, start has not started, it's in the pits, the uh, 72 car, 33 in the gravel and also pitting the look of things is the 40 graph racing car now that must yeah. that must be a car that didn't start either because we haven't come round to complete that lap safety car frigadilly in the pits graf in the pits 72 virage in the pits 33 virage in the gravel trap well, how many cars were involved in the incident that has claimed rob hodes was there some contact on the run into toza corner probably yes and have therefore a couple of cars also been involved so do we think uh, Alexandre Yvonne isn't even running? It's just, he's just looks to have left the pits. Well, there, oh, to start the, you can yeah, see. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Right, so that's that, that's an ACO rules. Yes. Strict regulation is that you can't start on the lead lap, just in case there's an incident at turn one, and then you are launched from the pit lane straight into it. H24 car leapfrogging half it of did, the GT field at the start there. Great start from Stefan Riquelme. Hydrogen powered, remember? But it's a long, long wait to the... Should make clear it's gone. the car and not Stefan Riquelme. Yes, it's powered by her. Correct. Although he does take a lot of water through the... Especially on a, a day like this, it is sweltering here in Emilia-Romagna. Um, the 
repeater lights confused me for a moment because yes. I kind of. But oh, when, uh, wow. Right, so yeah, there were several cars involved. Right. The Gelli car, the, 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 that is the Fricadelli car, one of the United cars. Fricadelli's in the pits. Graf Racing didn't see, but that might have been involved. Louis Saint Jouin, and it left Rob Hodes stranded in the toes of gravel. But the 30 cars made its way back to the pit lane. Yeah, Sean Lynn was the United car. It's the front clip going to be required for a change from the Fricadelli car. Incident at turn seven is under investigation. Involving car 33, but it involved about four yeah. other cars and as well. And here comes, comes the, the beautiful, bright tangerine, which as a Blackpool fan, I'm very proud to see. Yeah. Um, Lamborghini Huracan. Oh, I should get Delhi Sports Cup running on that. You really should. I really yeah, should. That's an open goal, Graham. Come on. So the Abelan car, that's the Fricadelli racing that, machine, gets a new nose. And uh, Louis Saint Jouin, don't I didn't see how this car was connected, water. but it is a fluid pouring from the right hand side of that car. So I hope the, the team have spotted that. Yes, they have, because they're mopping it up from the top. So the engine covers come off. So is that oil or just it looks uh, coolant? Like where, is it where the rad is? And it's yeah. further back than where maybe well, I'm not sure. I think the rad on the liche is at an angle, so that it might be the trailing edge of the, the radiator that has been caught, bent, buckled, and, and uh, allowing water to escape or coolant to escape, sadly. So the speed of this race tempered, we only managed to complete one lap, one and a half laps at racing speed, and then the decision was made. Because Rob Hode's car was in such a vulnerable position, it's being moved, of course, and the question is, will it be moved back to hard standing so that Rob can continue in the race? It's going to go two laps down now, sadly, for the 33 car. And it's not been a good start to the race for the no. other uh, Team Virage machine either, because that had to start a lap down from the pit lane. Recovery of the 33 car rapidly underway. Now, is he going to be in a position to restart that car? Possibly. Didn't yeah. see what's caused the issue, uh, but we did see the kind of the carnage that uh, prevailed immediately afterwards with at least four cars involved, and I think it was more than that. That's that a lot of steam being look released look good, from Louis saint jeans car and uh, no, it's, massively it's, overheating. It's coolant, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. That's you wouldn't want to send that car back into the race no. because, I mean, there's every chance the engine will, will blow because it's not getting the required cooling. They'll try and do a quick fix on that, Graf Racing, but it's a big ask and uh, risk versus reward. They're already two laps down. So when it says levers, it leaves us with the 29 car ahead in the hands of Jerome Sadler as someone is grabbing a little bit of piece of carbon fibre. That'll uh, go well tonight in the souvenir. Absolutely. Um, now that's store. the garage wall. Indeed. Uh, it's uh, Fabien Miquet Michel in the City Sport Car second. Then Freddie Hunt up to third. Alexander Match is fourth. Tony Wells up to fifth ahead of Orton Gibbonson, who's lost out um, to sixth there. Alexander Pekansov, Daniel Schneider, Mo Smith, and Jack Wolf. Uh, they make up the top ten. Good progress from Martin, which is we're commentating. GT3 down in 22nd position. Jens Moller has gone to the front there. Yeah. Head of Manueli Busnelli on home ground. Stephen Patrick third with Frank Madudin. Apologies. Uh, with um, it is Christian Poulsen fourth. And a great start for the H24 racing car up into 28th position from a start that was somewhat lower than that. Uh, the damaged nose, I think, is being inspected now, but the 30 car that it was taken from is back into it the is. race, crucially. Unfortunately for Klaus Abelan, he is a lap down now, but no more than a lap. No, got a long way a back from Alexandre Yvonne. But, so uh, we've, got, we've got three cars a lap down as a result of all this shenanigans. One of them is the W10 racing car. Yes. Now, how's that lost a lap? It's not um, been into the pits. That's had to have been off the road. That, that car started on the front row. Yes, it did. Yeah, it did. And, and it was running pretty well for the first lap. So, so Alex was there some contact? Yeah, Alexander Yvonne, we saw, was starting from pit lane in the first place. The Frickadelli racing car number 30, which is back into the race. Um, it's a it's a 309, which is actually right. I and mean, what I was comparing it with is the, is the times immediately above, yeah. but everybody else is doing 309. So the last lap's OK. It's whatever happened on lap two, which is the question mark. Yeah. Um, but Leo couldn't pull across the nose of Fabian Michal ah. as the 33 rejoins. I did wonder whether that might oh. be the case. Rob, that's a lot of gravel. And thankfully not on the racing line just yet. That's going to require a clear-up. pouring out of the left-hand side, isn't it's it? It's still pouring out the left-hand side. He's going to require a clear-up. 
Well, do we get a track sweeper on the circuit between Toza and Piratella? Is there the necessary time for that? But back to the point about Leo Weiss. He was side by side with, initially with Jerome de Sadalia, but de Sadalia got a, a good start. He then couldn't get ahead of the Fabian Michel car, the red and yellow. There's gravel all over the road. Scary, and I just wonder, in trying to get back into that queue, which was very congested on the opening lap at Tamburello, has there been an off-track moment, which it's, has resulted in the WTM car losing basically all the places? Is it just a timing glitch? Well, we have had one of those we from have. the start of the race. So we'll keep so. an eye on that one. For the moment, it looks as if it's been a bad uh, start to the race for the WTM racing car. Yeah. We spotted it in the queue. I haven't looked for it, but I mean, it's it's tripped the transponder well, at the end of the middle sector, but still only with two two laps to its name. Yeah, it's lost a lap. So whether this is a a, comp, a, a, a this is this is the situation because of the safety car. Anyway, let's concentrate on the 33, which is rejoining. And rejoins just in front of the safety car, and yeah. then drops the equivalent of several drives worth of gravel and that's being helped by the exhaust because yeah. i mean it's almost as if the exhaust was jet jetting stones out of the left bank there and the dust from it of course not help on the aerodynamics of the car no went down well with the safety car crew <laughs> so there there'll be messages i'm sure on the screen this is the h24 car which started so well in the hands of stefan Riquelme. so why does it look like that well, because it requires a heck of a lot of cooling, is why. You take off the bodywork of the rear of that car. You can see, by the way, the, well, the bulbous side pods, they are the hydrogen tanks for this car, um, and are tested, fully crash-tested. That's one of the reasons why the car has been delayed into competition. Uh, but if you take off the bodywork of this car, to the side and rear of the car, there's a lot of radiator. A lot. Chemical process, the electrical processes involved in the power that this car produces uh, creates a lot of heat. The air scoop on the roof and on the side pods akin to almost a Group B rally car. It looks so spectacular. It's almost got a canopy in addition to the closed cockpit there. And when the, the engine cover is removed, it is just a mass of radiators at all sorts of peculiar angles in order to cool the necessary electrical components. And I think mainly batteries, which are uh, having, where the, the power is generated through the hydrogen cell, but then it is plowed into uh, a huge amount of lithium batteries. Um, and that is how it generates the power it needs. It sounds incredibly electrical, the whirring noise instantly recognisable like when you're whoosh, in it? yeah. It's like a whoosh. Yeah, so, I mean, not something... I expected it to sound a bit like a water wheel, to be honest, on the side of a mill, uh, because it's all hydrogen power. That's not the case. And, uh, yeah, the advances that they have made, incremental steps over the last few years, as we witness again the amount of gravel all pouring out on the left-hand side, because that's the direction the car ended up in the gravel, so it has scooped it all up within the... Uh, the side pod and now being spat out to that left hand side everybody else in the race has at least been had a chance to witness how much gravel there is and they've also yep. been across that surface to try and uh, kind of um, rake it clear like like an opening car on a rally stage which is the road sweeper let's get going with the replay of the star from our drone here at Imola and Jerome de Sadelier in the perfect position, just slightly ahead of Leo Weiss. Does this provide an answer as to exactly what happened to Leo Weiss if indeed his incident was on lap one? So he tries to cut across the nose of Fabian Michal, but Michal positions his car perfectly. Annoyingly, they'll disappear behind the trees there. Leo Weiss is still there in third position, though, and onward they will go towards Varianti it's Villeneuve. It's corrected, he's third. Uh, good. Is okay. Corrected. So, so our worst fears that he was a lap down have been allayed, thankfully, and they just didn't count him across the line on one of those laps. He's been inserted again manually. They're listening to us, Graham. All the guys in Alcamel. Yeah. It's, it's, and I was, it's not anything else to do this afternoon, is it? I was very complimentary to uh, some of the Alcamel staff that share our truck, actually, about the uh, the, the track limit uh, information that we're now getting for this year. And yeah, have they suggested that we might get some information oh. about ELMS, uh, perhaps next year, about, you know, those LMP3 stops yes. and the longer ones? Yeah. I was thinking, maybe what about a column 
for those when the two long stalls are done. Cool. A little dot that appears. You're been, good. Been taken you should board. do this for a living, mate. Um, you really should. Um, well, we'll wait to see if anything happens. Way, this is this is heroic. Isn't it just? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it, I talked about a track sweeper, which we do have here this weekend behind a tractor, but a lot to be said for pure per people power, which is what's being enforced outside of Tosa there. Not prepared, but I'd like to take a moment uh, because we lost the marshal last weekend at the November 24 hours qualification race, a medical emergency immediately after a clear up, not unlike that, um, in pretty distressing circumstances, and we lost them that afternoon. And we should remember that these ladies and gentlemen are all volunteers, without which we could not go racing. And I just want to take a moment while we're behind the safety car, just for a moment, to remember that. Thank you. Clear up goes on, on pit lane well done, and Graham. out on the circuit. Yeah. Um, so, no, a fantastic touch, and uh, yeah, echo your thoughts about um, the, the efforts that, that marshals go to. I mean, they absolutely adore racing. They do, and that's They're the reason why they get most involved. Passionate. You think you're passionate? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're here no. wearing, wearing your Valentino Rossi cap, and <laughs> you know, and, your, and your, come close. your cool racing T-shirt. I, I don't even want to know what your underpants are, but but the, I can show you if you want. No, that was really bad hell, idea. Hell no. But. But the massive incidents we have sometimes, unfortunately, on racetracks, it's the marshals that have to appear on scene straight away yep. and be utterly professional and deal with whatever presents itself. Um, and we also rely on them, you know, tending to the track surface whenever it gets littered with whatever. Well, they put their life on the line sometimes. It shouldn't be like that, but that, that is part and parcel of the job, and we're forever grateful. A little over an hour and a half still to go and this race has not really got started yet an intense lap and a bit but the safety car brought out because of the off-track moment for Rob Hodes and a number of other cars involved as well I think everybody else everyone's still running aren't they 40 car has reached on the race yeah. so that I presume was just it was likely uh, some kind of fitting with the cooling system they've managed to refix safety car is coming in this lap that's what it sounds like, and, <laughs> and about to go racing again. Glorious V10 of the Lamborghini Huracan as Round Rivactor 2 will go Jerome de Sadelier. That looks to be a very good getaway. Fabian Michel reacts well too, though, and Leo Weiss, there he is in the lead, Duquesne. Uh, we were concerned that he'd gone a lap down, bizarrely, but that was just a timing glitch, and he's very much on the lead lap with Freddie Hunt trying to hang on to his coattails and Leo Weiss thought about it, didn't he, into Tamburello this time, but not quite close enough. Could have spelled disaster. And remember, we've got an hour and a half of this race to go now, so we don't want to do anything stupid in the opening uh, restart lap. Into Varianti Villeneuve they will go. With uh, Freddie, oh, there has been a slight off track moment though for the DKR engineering car. That's John Brownson, and as he rejoins, one or two others have to check up as he goes across the, the racing line. So that's caused some confusion in the midfield. Might well have been Andres Latour for United Order Sports and Mark Crader who had to arrest their speed. Been a good getaway for Jens Moller in GT3. He retains the class lead that he was able to get from Emanuele Busnelli. Uh, as they launch their way away from the grid. Uh, hearing, from, hearing from Hayley down in pit lane, by the way, it was a replacement radiator hose. Uh, so well done, Graf Racing, for getting that done. It will not have been cold, cool underneath that uh, cowling. We are back underway, though. So it has cost us some competitive running. The good news is all 40 cars are still out there and battling. 29 from 37, 11, 76, 10, 7, 77, 44, 32, and 69. House. Indeed. The Thunderball number. <laughs> it is the 44. We could go on. We could. But uh, uh, Team Tour under a bit of pressure now from Alexander Bukantsov in the other DKR engineering car. There's a fair bit of a queue forming up between, uh, behind Orden Goodmanson. But 
he just needs to keep his head, stay focused on the road in front. And if he realises he's losing time through defensive work, then uh, within his rights to allow Bukansov by, and that's exactly what he's going to do without losing too much time into Tamburello himself. That's a change for seventh position. Jerome de Sadelier building a lead of 1.1 seconds on lap eight from Fabian Michel for CD Sport. Then it's uh, Leo Weiss for WTM Racing, Freddie Hunt for Reiter. But um, a cork in the bottle is Alden Goodmanson in the opening phase for Team Tour. Although, well, now that that DKR engineering car has wriggled free, Goodmanson just upping the speed a little bit and uh, building a cushion back to the next car, which will be Daniel Schneider in ninth for United Autosports. So, a quick lap underway. I'd expect from Jerome de Sadelier pulling away 1.2 seconds ahead coming into the final sector of what is effectively the first flying lap of this race. Well, the laps completed at least partially under caution and or safety car. It's uh, the Sadelier from Fabien Michel. Let's see where the second MV MV2S car has recovered to the top 30, in fact, runs just ahead of Stefan Raquelmi in 30th position in the H24 car. And another great lap there from Jerome de Sadelier, bettering his previous best at 140.772 that becomes the new fastest lap of the race. De Sadelier put on a show like this uh, at Le Castellet as well. Mightily experienced in radical challenge racing, around Europe and has raised an awful lot as well in the UK but this is a significant step up to ACO rules racing to be part of the Michelin Le Mans Cup and he's taken to it so far like a duck to water but didn't take the race win at Le Castellet because of a bit of bad luck later on in the race so it's all about building from this opening stint for the British based Swiss in car number 29 later on in the race uh, Louis Rousset who we heard from being interviewed by Hayley Edmonds after the qualifying and that bizarre moment where the two MV2S Forestier racing cars collided with one another uh, and neither of them finished the session but thankfully for Jerome he'd already set pole position and that could still stand. Now there was an incident at turn seven Ah, they've identified some other cars, I, I can see. 30 and 13, that's Not the T2 the racing. 33 was the one that was off into the gravel. The 30 car is the Frickadelli car. So it would seem that the decision has been made that that was what triggered it. And perhaps Rob Hodes was a unwitting victim. And the Hegeli by T2 racing car, which is another Duquesne for Pierre de, de Curtins, was also involved, car 13. Car three on the investigation for unsafe release between turns two and four. That is the DKR engineering car that you saw causing a little bit of carnage. Yes. Fabian so. Michel now quickest. So that time between the race leader and second place comes down a little bit. 140.627, the new fastest lap. Leo Weiss shadowing Michel's every move and looks to be a little quicker, but just can't find the way through at the moment in the best of the best place of the Duquesnes. And at Tamburello corner, the 43 car, which is Jack Wolf's racing spirit of Le Mans Ligier, running in 11th position and at the tail end of essentially the battle for eighth, which at the moment is in the hands of Alden Goodmanson for Team Tour. Side by side for, I think, the GT3 race lead. It Jens is. Moller to the inside, Busnelli to the outside, and this is Busnelli on the fight back. Can he go around the outside much like Dimitri Engelbert did earlier on in the day? No, and he catches a bit too much curb there, which will delay the Porsche and just give Jens Moller a bit more breathing space. Yeah, to battlers, not in their first flush of youth, but they're enjoying this. Jens Moller, whose racing heritage goes back to and includes runs in the old Lister Storm LMP 900 car. Nice. And Nelly, what a gentleman, um, waiting to get his refettled, or he needs a new uh, fuel tank, which has been affected by this global shortage and global supply chain issues. He went out and bought this car to respect his full season entry for the Michelin Le Mans Cup. He's going very well in it indeed. 
still has the force of nature is Fabio Babini to come. So the car he's waiting for is a Lambo, Lam isn't it? Lamborghini Huracan. It has yeah. raced in the Michelin Le Mans Cup before. It's now in fully ovoed up spec, but it is a gorgeous piece of work. Take a look back uh, on the internet and look for Pastelli's name and Huracan. You'll see them tight, on the lead. Tight. No, that's too tight. Yeah, that was... Trying I think, to do this. Yeah, and on the bullet racing, Aston Martin that's been started by Pat, uh, Simon Pat, uh, Stephen Patrick, Correct. beg your pardon, got there eventually, and the incident being flagged for yellows now, but that was... A, a prototype not giving it was the GT never work, was it? opportunity to get through the chicane. At some point, Stephen Patrick needed to turn right, and Crichton then do this was through a gap that didn't really exist. And actually, I'm surprised that the Aston was able to limp away from there. Let's hope there's not too much damage been done. He's lost one place within class, so Christian Paulson goes through for third position, and Stephen Patrick left to uh, lick his wounds a little bit there and hope that not too much damage has been done. I could yeah. see that happening a mile off, yeah, though, Graham. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I could see you you're tensing. Tensing. I don't mean sure, but... And that was Paulson over the grass it because was. he had nowhere else well, to go. Absolutely. And into third position as a result. Just trying Stephen, to check the Aston. I think visibly it looks OK. Yeah, Stephen Patrick recovered pretty quickly there. Has lost positions, unfortunately, as a result of that. Uh, principally, though, to LMP3 cars and not to GT cars. Drops back to fourth in GT. Incident involving car 31 is understandably under investigation. I can't believe that's going to go the way of anybody other than Stephen Patrick being not at fault. Fastest lap of the race back to Jerome de Sadelier down into the 139s now. First car in the whole of the race to do that. It's a 139.7. Yeah, Stefan Riquelme letting the leaders go in the H24 car. That car still circulating down in 35th position now. Can't believe that safety car, by the way, will have done its cooling any good whatsoever. No, no, it needs to be travelling through the air at great speed. Great battle for second here, though, between the CD Sport car of Fabien Michel and Leonard Weiss. But uh, that is allowing Jones Sadler just to get away a little bit. Equally well, good battle for the lead here in GT. Manimoli Busnelli will be looking to see whether or not this confounding factor that is the GT, so the LMP3 car ahead of Andrew Ferguson, the 24-7 motorsports car, will that allow him any kind of opportunity to close on the Honda ahead? Great so to have the Hondas this year. Yeah, and three of them as well. They look very impressive this Porsche in their quick. awning. Busnelli, uh, he's not going to be given the track space. He needs to be on the other side, really, but I'm sure Moller would have covered that line as well. But Jens Moller able to drive very swiftly, but also have full knowledge of what's going on in his door mirrors. Emanuele Busnelli, though, not short of any pace this weekend at Ebi Motors' home race, but in a very un-Italian Porsche. Yeah, rather oddly, the Honda built in Italy, uh, built in Milan by Jazz Engineering. So the uh, bare body shells supplied from the US where the road cars are built, then shipped to Italy, where Jazz Engineering, who've been long-time partners of Honda, uh, build all the Honda and Acura badged NSX GT3. Still, this battle goes on for second place, and it says the 11 can't make it, toughed it out. Toughed it out with second time we've seen him, Duquesne managed to do that on straight line speed, for finding themselves alongside and able to just uh, execute the outbreaking manoeuvre. Nicely done there by York Vice. Yeah, and remember. Leonard Vice, sorry, apologies. No, this is dad, isn't it, Gail? It is. Uh, Leo, uh, the silver at WTM Racing, and they've chosen to put Leo in for the opening stint. This is where they need to make hay. And uh, yeah, that was greeted by a round of applause down at WTM. Uh, racing. Put you back into it, boys. It wasn't, oh. That wasn't enthusiastic enough. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> Do it with conviction, <laughs> if you, especially if you know you're being filmed. Um, anyway, so Michal, I mean, the move to fend off Leo Weiss at the start of the race was very impressive mm -hmm. for the 44-year-old Frenchman. Uh, he's a former champion in the FFSA GT4 France uh, Championship with Santillot Racing. So there's... Not necessarily any Santa Lock uh, connections, mm -hmm. there aren't with CD Sports, but Here nevertheless he's dovetailing a uh, season with European GT4 in 2022. Again, nose to tail in GT3 between Jens Moller and Emanuele Busnelli. Try as he might to shake this Porsche. It doesn't go far away for very long. And this Porsche, I think if it was in clear air, might be able to build a bit of a gap. This is allowing Stephen Patrick back into the mix because he's got himself not quite up to... Now, let's just see. 
Yeah, Patrick's he's... the next car on the road, isn't he? No third. It's their fourth, rather. He's behind. He's still fourth. Okay. He's behind Christian Poulsen. I thought I caught a glimpse of the but, Aston. Uh, no, it's, it's further back than I thought, yes. But he is beginning to make inroads on Christian Poulsen. Patrick close back to under a second and a half back. Just another yeah. good run from Stephen Patrick, this. And it's encouraging for me that the Aston doesn't appear to have been too badly yeah. damaged in the incident at the top of the hill at Variante Alta. It's British, damn it. It's just, of course it is. It's just shrugged it off. <laughs> With a big smoke screen and yep. oil slick behind it. That's that's not a front splitter, it's a stiff upper lip. Very good. Quite right too. Now, a bit of curb being taken by Jens Moller. Is he feeling the heat from Emanuele Busnelli? Off of uh, tyre smoke, I think, as he mounted the curb at Varianti Alta. And a couple of seconds ago, was there another incident here? Yes, for the 53. Martin Rich. Yeah. Martin Rich was closing in on a couple of cars in front of him. Yeah. Uh, he'll have been irritated by that because he's made great progress, by the way, 14th position. And that's also an error for Jack Wolf, yep. the racing spirit of Le Mans. So Jack well off into the stones at Tamburello corner, but thankfully is able to rejoin and not compromise anybody else's line out of that first chicane on the lap. What could be interesting here is these two LMP3 cars getting involved. That's the ANS Motorsport car and the Hegeli by T2 racing car. Make it by the EP Motors car with no real dramas. Let's see Busnelli takes the curbs just to keep out of the way there. That though uh, will still delay Jens Muller. That will help Busnelli's chase. So traffic giveth and traffic taketh away. Jonathan Brossard trying to make moves to the middle order. Remember the ANS Motorsport car brought out one of the red flags in the qualifying earlier today. And we think all of the its lap times were then wiped because yeah. Brossard had to start from the back of the field, but his pace should be better, not much better than that. I'm not surprised to see him working his way up to 24th overall now. Peter de Gerton's making a slightly heavy weather of this first race, of course, for this Gelly by T2 Motorsport car. It was tied in with that first lap incident. It's part of the investigation there. We'll see Lars Cairn, well-known Porsche development and test driver, as well as race driver in that car later. Uh, but for this race only, after that, the place will be taken by Mark Vasseng, driver of no little heritage. Here comes Busnelli, though, and this is a much better position for him. Mark Vasseng, at the road to Le Mans races, as we said in the qualifying show, will start a race at Le Mans for the first time in a career that's lasted about a quarter of a century. Yeah. Astonishing. He's here, by the way, and is acting, amongst other things, as race engineer. There'll be a warning flag to Jack Wolf for abusing the track limits. Well, he was way off the circuit and into the gravel trap, but nevertheless, you still get pinged for abusing track limits there and crossing the white line. And the two GT3 leaders are closing in on the H24 car. Now, is the H24 car getting to a phase where it's struggling? It is struggling a little bit. I mean, that's fully expected, yeah, yeah. I think. With its first, first ever outing in a competitive motor race, Stefan Riquelme capable of, uh, well, what's he done so far? 203.3 is his best. His last. His right. last lap, beg yeah. pardon, yeah. Um, oh, but we haven't got a best we lap, got a best lap on, at the on moment. our current configuration of screen, but he's been quicker than that. But that's the reason why he's being caught by GT3 cars now, yeah. because they're down in the 148s. So significantly faster. I'm pretty certain we'll be told by the team post race that that period under the safety car wasn't conducive to good cooling of a hundred fuel cell car. Yeah. But it is all about learning. It's double yellows at turn eight, so something's going on down at turn eight. Whilst we worked that out, a 153 was Riquelme's best time, 153.5. Okay. That's fairly respectable. Uh, and the LMP3 leaders doing 143s currently, but the best lap of the race, still in the hands of Jerome de Sadelier with his 139.7. I think it's Jonathan Brossard has been in trouble, by the way. Here he, Brossard here we see in him. the six car, to the right of your shot, tries to go through Toza and, and loses, loses it, it. two-thirds of the way through the corner. Poses a problem for uh, who is that that needed to take to the grass? That's, the Hegeli car is the bright the yellow Ferguson, machine. That's the Ferguson car. That's 24 the 7 car. Safety car because Brossard is in a position of real peril there. Yes. That's a full commitment corner, isn't it? Tozer is. Oh, oh almost. Very tight that was indeed. The, that was the Targonitsa car. The problem is you're going to get two abreast LMP3 cars and indeed GT3s. Well, that explains exactly why the safety car is important yeah. here. You can't get the car restarted. 
Yeah, and it's not a nice place to be sitting. I wonder whether the bullet has been partly torn off by a passing car, in fact, and it clipped the rear Could have been. of Brossard's number six ANS Motorsport. Might have been just car. over the kerb. Yeah, true. Well, either way, um, that, that will need looking into, if indeed Jonathan can get the car restarted. So he was trying to overtake the car that you mentioned, number 27. No and then contact there, no contact there, no, it's... No, no, I don't know if it was in recovery. He's then presumably going to spin the car around, is he? Or look for all... Oh, Busnelli! Busnelli's in trouble. very slow, up the hill, so yes. I'd like to see that part of that again, Busnelli. Was that in avoidance? What happened here? Look to the inside. But there's also the Frickadelli racing car that has to he take was, to avoid it as well. I think, so, I think he saw it happening ahead of him, and the Frickadelli yeah, car that's, that's off the Frickadilly a, car off. A tiny kiss into the barrier. So carnage, really, but uh, happily no major damage. But yeah. I suspect Busnelli braked and lost the car in avoidance of what he could see unfa uh, unfolding in front of him. Yeah. But that has given Jens Muller a big advantage. And in fact, Busnelli, before the safety car was called, fell down to fourth position. So Christian Poulsen makes it a GMB Motorsport Honda 1-2 now with bullet racing up to third. The issue for Jonathan Brossard, a massive one, is that he was travelling in the wrong direction for a fair few metres there. And I know what he was trying to do, get the yeah. car turned around as quickly as possible, but you need to be off the road when I you're doing that. I don't think that's going to be viewed no. well by race but, control. But, but then because it's causing other car cars to take massive avoidance, avoiding action, like Klaus Abelan, and poor Klaus in the Frickadilly Racing Team car has ended up off in the gravel and possibly damage to the front, if indeed he made contact with the tyre wall and uh, Busnelli's Porsche limping its way out of Toza as well. So Busnelli listed as fourth now. He's lost two places to Christian yeah. Poulsen and oh, to Stephen showing. Patrick. H24 in the pits, Frickadilly in the pits. And uh, if this is a regular stop for the H24 car, that will be the first fuel stop for a hydrogen fuel cell car in this championship. Um, here comes the cavalry to recover the ANS Motorsport machine of Jonathan Brossard, not very far away from where he lost the car in qualifying we're to bring out the second of the red flags. We're getting close to the point where we're going to have to name Manitou as a series partner, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, this weekend, yes. So, Klaus Abelan describing exactly what happened um, in the Frickadelli machine. I think that might be them out of the race then. He's out of the car, well, yes. We're not in the, the pit stop window yet, no, are we? No. So I think that might be them done. Yeah, it depends. Well, yes, if he, if he realises the car's too badly damaged, I'm impressed that he got it back to the pit so quickly. Uh, but explaining the situation as he arrived at Toza. It may be that he just feels they're, so, they're two laps down now. Yeah. Uh, and he doesn't want to risk it any further. So the ANS car, to my mind, looks like that car is done as well. Well, that will be lifted away from the scene courtesy of those lugs on the roof. I noticed that one or two cars have been dragged away by a, a towing strop actually through the rear wheels. That's how they've recovered a, a couple of cars from the gravel trap. Uh, but this is the more conventional way of doing it. Is Jonathan still in the car? Yes, he is. OK, yep. yeah, sitting a little further back than I'd expected. So that there is a chance that ANS Motorsport can rejoin the race. We'll take this second safety car, though, to grab a word with one of the drivers. Jerome de Sadalia continued to lead from Leo Weiss. Right, so I'm down here in uh, the Graf garage with um, Theo Vauchy. Now, Theo, you're obviously waiting to, for your stint, but if we can just go over what happened at the beginning of the race with Lewis, because we obviously, obviously the car came in and there was a big problem with the radiator hose, so they replaced, but do you have any information about how that happened? Yeah, I think it was very tricky at the first corner because there was a lot of car and it was the start of the race. And, uh, yeah, my teammate has been hit by another car and... Uh, he didn't do any mistake, but uh, that's the race, and we lost uh, uh, more than three laps uh, to, to solve the, the issue. So, so yeah, now it will be very difficult to to reach our target and to to fight in the front. So, yeah, yeah. for me it will be an opportunity to to take experience and uh, and to take the the best as we can. But uh, yeah, now uh, the situation is very not good. We lost a lot of a uh, lot of time. So we saw obviously a lot of 
water um, coming out of the car. Do you, um, do, were they com able to completely fix the issue? Yeah, yeah, now it should be okay. So what was it? Yeah, it, it was just uh, a piece in the engine and we had the, the mechanics find the time to, to change it. So, so now the, the car is working perfect, so, but uh, uh, we still have some missing, so. I appreciate that, but it's also, I mean, we've been watching the very first part of this race and it's just been so much has been going on. Um, are you surprised by that or is that to be expected at here in Imola? Is it a, a, a tough track? Yeah, I think so. It was a bit expected with a, a lot of cars and uh, we were starting in the middle of the, of the field, so obviously there is a, a bigger risk to, to have uh, an incident with, uh, with the other cars. So. Yeah, but uh, we told him to, to be careful with that, uh, to my teammate, but uh, yeah, it was coming from behind, so uh, we cannot deal with, uh, with that. OK, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's Teo Vosche. Thank you, Hayley Edmonds, for yep. uh, yeah, catch up there. So Vosche sharing the Graf car, the number 40, with Louis Saint-Jouin, but unfortunately that's looking like... Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it was still in the race. Oh, I was confused there because there's a car in the hijacks, but there's another Graf car, I think. That's the, the LMS car. That's the LMS car, car, indeed. So Louis saint Jean is in the race, but uh, last. running in 37th position. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so two things to say there. Uh, first thing is you may have noticed a sound in the background. It was a kind of, I guess, a whooshing sound. That was the H24 car coming back out after its pit stop. Uh, so that will be the fill stop for the car. Remember, it's not racing for points, not racing for anything other than experience here, but five minutes on pit road for that car. Uh, also, we did say we thought uh, the manner of the attempt to rejoin the race by Jonathan Brossard may not have pleased uh, race control. Reported to the stewards for trade dangerous driving, uh, and that will have been driving a significant distance against the flow of the traffic. Yeah. I'm sure of that. Uh, it's a warning flag for abusing track limits to uh, Gino Forgione in the 61 car. Um, yeah, let's get back racing. It would be nice, wouldn't it? But uh, some of that is to do with the, the nature of the circuit, blind corners, gravel traps, high kerbs. Well, not necessarily a little bit here out of Villeneuve, but otherwise the kerbs aren't too bad. You get to the sausage kerbs at Valley Anti Alta, which if you attack those uh, too brutally could spell disaster. But uh, we've still got the crucial part of the race to come, i.e. the main pit stops once the drive time for these pilots is done. And uh, they haven't exactly had an easy job of it so far because it's very difficult to keep everything up to temperature during a safety car. You're having to heave ho left and right to ensure that the Michelin tyre temperature is ready to go at a moment's notice and the safety car lights remain on but i did notice that perhaps the speed no. of the safety car was being picked up on the last time around and they go out now they are coming right now so, so we're going to go back to racing with an hour and eight minutes to go so not very far away at all from the pit stop window jerome de sadelier worked very hard during, well, between the two safety cars to build a decent lead. That's been completely evaporated, though, now. And he'll have to try again. Already gone, I reckon. Partway through Rivazza, he's decided... Oh, oh he's no. lost it! Too early! And oh, the other device no. is going to be collected as well. So the new race leader is going to be Fabian Michel, who will be straight back into a safety car, almost guaranteed of that. Jerome de Sadelier limps back to the pit lane. Leo Weiss almost reacted to that and uh, got away with it across the grass and the concrete but heavily damaged potential race winner that machine and out of the race with huge rear end damage for Leo Weiss Fabian Michel does indeed restart as the new race leader Freddie Hunt up to second and Alexander Matchell runs third ahead of Tony Wells and Alexander Bukantsov but talk to me about the restart there, Graham Goodwin. Jerome de Sadelier. Are just, are just too heavy on the throttle by the look of things. Sent the car around, collected the 11 car that almost, as you quite rightly said, Johnny, got away with it. But the 11 car, pretty destroyed. Safety car is out again. And still side another, by side for second. There's another car off. That's Jack Wolf, isn't it? I think it was. There was another car still in the background of the barrier. Oh, at Tozer. Well, that's yes. probably Jacques Wolf. No, no, it's, no, no, it's no this is earlier in the lap. This is earlier in the lap. So that's the... Oh, dear me. 
that's oh that's Villeneuve chicane just confused momentarily because of the angle we were seeing it at so that's turn six and you reckon a car off at turn I'm seven pretty certain I saw as well. another car and a nose into the barrier in the background I like this Lamborghini Huracan a lot but I'm seeing too much of it today <laughs> I have to say this is the third safety car period in a race that's not there yet three quarters it's, it's of an hour yeah. uh, who was involved with the incident in the Aston Martin at the top of the hill indeed. at Variante Alta so, so this was just too hot. Yeah. And then bang, oh dear me, sickening. And also doing well to avoid was the... Is that the that was Virage car. Virage car, that OK. Down, that's Which Rob is, Hodes, that, isn't it? Yeah, OK. So Rob Hodes may well... Yeah, that may well have been his car that was involved in the initial safety car problem. So three separate incidents here. Oh, so threading the eye of the needle there. there, Jacques Wolf, and the two cars either side will have been breathing a sigh of relief. And it was then side by side. Ah, that wasn't for position, that's why. That was Rob Hodes being overtaken by Alexander Mazzolo. I Mazzola, wonder Mazzola, whether Tony or not Crichton and Dudis was, was distracted by the safety car boards coming out, which is certainly not something that should happen. Yeah. But he was heavily into the wall, front end first. 29 is done. 31 that, is done, 11 is done. Is that down to, I don't want to say Jerome de Sadelier is inexperienced, but he is in these cars, and is that down to knowing whether the tyres are up to pressure, up to temperature, in order to lean on them he just, coming out of Rivata? Because I noticed he'd chosen to go so, so early he did. Um, and thought, right, this is the moment to push, was fine through Rivata 1 and out of it, but then coming out of 2... It wasn't there, it wasn't there. No. And that might be to do with a bit of debris on the track, but I think it was more to do with the fact that the, the tyre temp had dropped so much and he just wasn't expecting the car to loop around. Leo Weiss, who hasn't really put a, a wheel wrong no. so far today, just caught up in a, an incident nowhere near his own making. So that's eliminated the top two cars in the race. I was asked not... An hour ago, who did I think was going to win the Michelin Le Mans Cup race today? I said, around this place, it is a complete lottery. Absolutely. You never know what might happen. And we've lost, potentially, the two favourites in one incident there. Yeah. Well, Jerome de Sadler will be upset with that. Uh, sorry, self-inflicted. Yeah. Just when, when there was no grip there to be had. And it didn't need to be that way because, you know, he'd built himself a tidy lead prior to the safety car, but then it's about keeping your head through these incidents that, that, that are interrupting proceedings. Yeah. He looks very puzzled, actually, whether something broke on the car, but I think it was more about too hot. just not knowing these cars and how they behave at a restart. Yeah, too hot into that turn in those circumstances, unfortunately. It, it's an error. I mean, like, it's, it's, yeah. it's not like he, he meant to... Oh, no, in his no. own race, but unfortunately he's ended the race with the 11 car as well. So it really has been event-filled in the absolutely, utterly the wrongest possible way, hasn't it? That's quite a Lentudi, so he's definitely out the race as well. The 11 car is out the race as well. And Jack Wolf, not sure about the 43, should be able to rejoin if they can get him out of the gravel. So Freddie Hunt is on pit lane and has made the pit stop. OK. Yes. Pits are open, and in they come. So this is the first chance, because the safety car's just appeared out of Rivatsa now and past the incident scene, as Crichton then do this struggles with the helmet a little bit uh, to get the radio cable disconnected as well. Keen to find out if Writer Engineering could have made an absolute masterstroke there. Was that pit window was open? You said it was. I yeah. think it was. Yeah. Well, remember, there, strictly speaking, there is no pit window. They've just got to, by the end of the race, have had their two drivers in for the required amount 55 of drive minutes. time. Yeah. And I think he's done that. So he's going to cut his out as everybody else is coming in. It won't be 55 minutes these days because, of course, it's a shorter race. Okay. But, but I take the point. Um, so, yeah, it's about uh, how long Freddie's been in the car for. Well, Gone are the days where you would put 50, a, a starting driver back in again. 47 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, 40, yeah I, I need to check. I think it's 45 minutes. You can check the new rules and the new uh, race length. So we're a little over an hour still to go. 
Feels like we've been going for about two hours um, with the extent of the incidents that we have had. The CD Sport car came in from the race lead with Fabian Michel driving it, but a number of cars deciding that this is not the moment to make their pit stop. So DKR Engineering, the new race leaders with Alexander Bukansov in the 14. Martin Rich in car 53 moves up to second position for RLRM Sport. Then it's Alexander Taukanitsa in the AT Racing Team. That's the new top three, but none of those cars have yet stopped. Minimum driving time, 45 minutes. OK. So it is a matter of whether or not they've taken any advantage at all by pitting early. They will get track position. Yep. Yep, so that the first car back out again, actually a GT3 machine, Marcus Vivian for AF Corsa in the 51. The car immediately behind the safety car is one of the team Virage machines, not on the lead lap. The DKR Engineering, by virtue of them not yet making a stop, are the leaders, car, Alexander Bukansov. Car 20 reported to the stewards for speeding in the pit lane, car 51 reported to the stewards for speeding in the pit lane. So that is the AF Corsa car. Uh, coming out now, I think that's Luke Davenport aboard the car now, because Marcus Vivian started to race. Car 20, meantime, is the Optum Motorsport car, Mark Crader. So the leading car that has pitted, as a, we, we get a picture of very, very happy, there he is, Alden Goodmanson, he's very pleased with his day. The leading car that has pitted as the leading six cars now pit is indeed the writer engineering car. Yes. Now, he will, of course, be caught behind the safety car. Had that race gone green at that point, they would have inherited, effectively, a lap lead. Yes, true. And now it, it remains to be seen how much of a wave by will take place now, because very often they don't correct the safety car order after the latest round of pit stops. So they pick the leader up before anybody stopped or before the second wave of pit stops. That's 10 seconds will be added to the DKR engineering car. That was the unsafe release after an off from John Brownson. You spotted that in rejoining it amongst a pack and causing a little bit of chaos there. So uh, 10 seconds, the next pit stop for the number three car. I don't, will it, will it, will it be this pit stop? Mm. He's just pitted. Yes. So it's probably too late. Unsafe release. Suggests it happened in the pit lane, though, rather no, than no, no, a rejoin. No, no. Is that say, still labelled no, as that? It did say it said between turns four and five, wherever it was. Uh, I would have expected that to have, said, to have said an unsafe rejoin rather than a release. But that's, it's that's what it said. Semantics, yeah. I suppose. Fine. So Mad Seiler Haug has pitted because that's the car that was started by Freddie Hunt from Correct. fourth position. 22 laps done. We're inside the final hour now, having had just 50 minutes on it, remember, but we yep. are inside 60 minutes to go, not far away from half distance, therefore, and uh, Writer Engineering lead from Adam Itecki, and there are, there's an awful lot of cars between those two behind the safety car, amounting to, at safety car speeds, 58 seconds. No, that's the, all that is, is because the 37 car has got to catch up the train. It's not so you don't seconds. think there's a cars between them? Uh, there may be cars between them, but there'll be lapped cars and it won't be very many because there are not that many lapped cars. So uh, the other point is that uh, as the safety car came through, it was not the 76 car behind it. Right, so there will be a corrective... Ah, oh, 76 has been let free now, according to our tracker, from the safety car. So at the moment, we have lost the four car for some reason, John Melson. Uh, the 29, 11, 31, 6 and 20. We're going to go down, though, to Hayley. It is down with Louis Rousset in pit lane. Louis, I mean, amongst anything, above anything else, it must be quite frustrating for you because, you know, Jerome did, you know, he, he did the qualifications and how he was out in the first in. So, you know, you're waiting here and you're definitely, you're, you're not going to be getting back into the car. We don't know what happened. We don't know if it was a mistake from Jerome or uh, something broke, uh, broke in the car. But uh, it's hard to speak. I'm a bit uh, angry. It, I'm sad uh, to don't drive. Uh, we don't know. Uh, the, the car is uh, still there. Uh, I think uh, the tire is uh, broken. So we'll check uh, in a few hours to, to know. Was he too keen on the throttle? Was he too much on the throttle? Or was it, was it, you know, was it a question of the tyres? Were the tyres too cool? What, what do you think it was? 
Charles? We we don't know yet. We will check uh, after the race. But uh, yeah, I'm sad. Yes. I, I, I can appreciate that. I understand that. Well, um, we got it for you. Sorry about that. And we'll um, we'll, we'll see, be, see you at the next round anyway. Yeah. We will. We will. We will be ready for Le Mans, and uh, we are ready now for Le Mans. That's the spirit. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, unfortunately for those guys, four weeks or so to wait. You want you want the next race of the championship tomorrow to take the, the, the memory of this horrible day away, because qualifying did not go to plan for MV2S Forest DA Racing, and certainly this race regarding the 29 has not gone to plan either. So still trying to sort out the race order behind the safety car. Right, well, Matt's uh, the... Uh, Sir Haug in the Rise of Engineering car is 10th in that queue. OK. So he's in the queue, 10th. Yeah, and Adam Itek is probably right with him now, because as you quite rightly pointed out, that massive gap of 50-odd seconds, 58 yeah. seconds at safety car speeds is has now shrunk six. hugely to six. So and there's likely be... I didn't check out who uh, what, where the gap was between the two of them to see where he is in the queue. Well, the, that's the X24 car. The, there's a writer car, then Stephen Patrick, then a cool racing car. Where is the CD Sport car? And Adam Itecki is a new name on the block as far as uh, he's just taken that car over. But yep. to give you some perspective, that's the car that was started by Fabian Michal. Who was second. Who was third on the grid, and he, he worked his way up to second place in race positions. Mads Seilerhaug is the race leader. And it remains to be seen whether they will correct things to put the 76 at the front. Because, as I say, he's made a pit stop since the safety car came out. So how much correcting do you do? Because, you know, in correcting this now, there might be more cars that make a pit stop. At some point, you've just got to settle for, well, this is the race order as best as we can get it. There's no immediate sign, is there? As you see, okay. that's how you do that. <laughs> Doing it for Iceland. Team we... Tour. Right over the kerbs. This is the 37. Yeah. CD Sport car we've been trying to track in that queue. Now, this might have been Fabian Michal still at the wheel when we filmed these super slow mos. Well, it has to be because he's not been out at speed, unless that's the. Uh, the this is, actually, the might, be, catch up. might be real speed behind the safety car. And, uh, I'm guessing that is Freddie Hunt. Yeah, squirming away on the Italian Trigolore curbing. Way, a second really good stint from Freddie Hunt. Pointing out here, by the way, Team Tor run third at the moment, and behind them, Melter Jakobsen, Colin Noble, Andy Merrick, Wayne Boyd, Garnet uh, Gar uh, Patterson, and that's trouble for one of the uh, Virage cars. There are a lot of very quick guys. Alex Mortimer, Lars Kern, Daniel Kielvitz. They're not the kind of people you want in your mirrors, are they? Certainly not. No, it, Kielvitz is a real so, star. So, um, Alexandre Vaughan was already in the pits, and right. it seems like he's been wheeled Back. in the wrong direction to the correct pit bay. Uh, all I'd say is this. It's been a frustrating first hour of this race. We're going to have 50 minutes to, uh, or so to go when this goes. But the ingredients are in place here for this to be quite spectacular, mm. hopefully in the right way this time. Yeah, agreed. And uh, There is the 37 car there behind the red and white Ferrari. Emanuele Busnelli, who started in the Ebi Motors Porsche number 46. Famous race number in these parts, if you're a fan of MotoGP. Kerr popping Honda, 55 car is the second place car in GT. After all of that, by the way, the leading GT car, the 44 car, in the hands of Gustav Birch, is 13th overall. Yeah. This has not been a very disciplined race for the LMP3 pack, has it? And still no message on our screen regarding a secondary wave by, although we... No, we're still not getting that. So I think we're going to be in a position, as the safety car lights go out now, going we in are in a lap. position where the race leader isn't the first car by any Correct. stretch behind the safety car. And that is because of a number of pit stops that have happened during the safety car phase itself. So this is a tricky restart for Mad Seiler How He does not have command of when he can go. Remember, no overtaking permitted before they cross that start-finish line. He's got behind him Stephen Patrick. No, a new driver in the Aston Martin now. Tia Nui. Thank you. Tia Nui, who is uh, piloting the Spanish-run bullet racing Aston Martin. Seiler How we go. With Fabio Babini right in front of him in the 46 Porsche. And Seiler Haug will be looking for a way by as quickly as possible. All the other cars up ahead have effectively lost nine-tenths of a lap 
compared to this car, the white machine, well, not the H24, the other white car that has just got by the hydrogen cell-powered machine. So Salahau still trying to get by the Porsche. It's a very white Porsche indeed. Abini, though, is under pressure from Nui behind for position in GT. Will not be keen to give up that place. Still not managed to get by. Where is the CD Sport car? It can only be closing that gap. There it is, behind the pack of cars behind the right of car. Now there's the opportunity, perhaps, for the car to go. But Adam Atiki getting through the turn behind them. He's closing the gap, but he's got a lot of traffic to deal with. Still not by. Now he does it. And finally, the much required clean air, albeit for a short period, because there's a gaggle of GT3s a little further up the road. Adam Itecki can't get by a Duquesne, and I'm not sure which Duquesne that is, but it looks to be going at about the same speed as Itecki. I wondered whether he'd just been overtaken by it, in fact. This is a massively jumbled up race. He's now got Malta Jakobsen right behind him. Jakobsen challenging for third, with yeah. Colin Noble also closing in. Uh, they've both gone by Michael Markison. That car's dropped down from third to fifth on this lap back behind, uh, back to green flag. Lots and lots of penalties coming. We'll call those in a moment. Down the hill into Rivazza and darting up the inside there is the number 33 Team Virage car, now being driven by Ian Rodriguez. And where's the Duquesne that I spotted in relation to Adam Itecki? Yeah, it's the number three, three car. car, which is actually quicker than Itecki right now, but a lap down. I think the number three... That's Laurence Hoare. That's why he's quick. <laughs> Champion in ELMS last yeah, year. But he's lapsed down and frustrated, I'm but he's sure. Just, but he's just actually unlapped himself, quite possibly, on Adam Itecki on the restart lap. The most significant of the penalties that are just scrolling through at the moment is the number 20 car. That is the ninth place car, the Optima Motorsport car, now in the hands of Alex Mortimer, and he will have to serve a drive-through penalty. There's Itecki going through, but he's been dropped by Lawrence Hose, laps down here. That could have saved Itecki a, a little bit of time because he leapt ahead of Fabio Babini before Malta Jakobsen could do likewise. Now the young Dane squeezes through at Toza, but Adam Itecki has just bought himself a little bit of real estate. I'm sure that'll close down into the rest of this lap when you look at Malta Jakobsen's performance in qualifying. As he goes through Piritella now and down the hill towards Varianti. There's her. There's Jakobsen. Yeah. Oh, sorry, there's Itecki. There's Jakobsen. Three very quick men, different laps. These, this, uh, th these two are battling away for position. So it's Mad Seilerhag that leads, but what about the fight for second and third, trying to get by the GT3, one of uh, three Honda NSXs there, and they do that. Uh, GMB Motorsport do lead the GT3 category with Gustav Bierch now at the wheel of the best-placed Honda from that crew, number 44. This, by the way, is helping the leader. Mats Hilehauk is pulling away a little in this traffic. Mayhem behind him in traffic, though. Now Jakobsen is with the Tiki. And we've got two quick drivers in, well, identically built, not identically, identically prepared Ligiers, but they've got one heck of a lot of traffic ahead. Look at this lot. And there's the Tuller touch. The RLR car's off, the DK car off, off as well. Itecki's off. And uh, Jakobsen wasn't close enough to pounce there, nor did he was he com confident that there wasn't a car broadside in front of him because of the cloud of dust from the gravel trap there. That was Capardia, wasn't it? So the spinner, 53 is the spinner, and will rejoin now. Oh, sorry, it's Tommy Foster. There Tommy Foster, yes, car 53. Cornish driver. So he's back in the race. That's the car that was started by Martin Rich. Oh. I don't think there was contact with him and Lawrence Hoare, who was the first car to take avoiding action at Tamburello Corner. He skated right across the gravel in the DKR car and following suit, Adam Itecki, who's now being monstered all over the back of by Malta Jakobsen. Itecki squeezes up the inside of one of the United cars, which has to go wide uh, to Aqua Minerale. But Malta Jakobsen, like he's on rails, staying in third position and looking for the opportunity. Well, the, there was one at Tamburello, but that would have been a brave manoeuvre to stick to the track because he had no clue where Tommy Foster was in that big gravel cloud. And as they go through Varianti, uh, Varianti Alta and down the hill into Rivazza, still just as close as they negotiate the TS Corsa Duquesne. It's like a bar fight out there, isn't it? It's absolutely crazy. Chairs have been thrown, you name it. 
no rules at all. No, there, there absolutely are rules and regulations, and hence the reason why we had a mass of uh, reports from various issues. Fastest lap of the race, by the way, goes to the car in 18th position at the moment. Tom Dillman, 139.357. Lots of cars out of position after the chaos we've seen in the first hour of this race. Well, Lawrence Hoare clearly has the pace to be able to win this race, but he's trying to just gain a lap back on Mad Seilerhout. Still listed as the, the first car not on the lead lap. Car three for DKR. Yep. Second and third, Animiteki bouncing over the kerbs at Villeneuve. Mal uh, Malta Jakobsen flashing the lights now. He's trying anything to distract Animiteki, force him into a mistake. H24 racing back in again that's, for Mission H24. That's, that looks to be a fuel. Uh, that's yeah. the fuel. This is the fueling uh, station, or the filling station. Which is a filling? huge container, basically, isn't it? That it's, has to be lowered from the rear of a, a yeah, truck, but I there guess. Are, there are uh, hydrogen tanks on the other side of that. It's effectively a processing station. Yeah. They don't appear to be filling the tank. And you'll notice there's a cooling blower attached to the air scoop. So they're waiting patiently and uh, with plans, we hope, to rejoin the race. But at the moment, the safer option might be to park in the pit lane. <laughs> if, if you're not in contention to win this race, I'd just get out of it because it's bonkers at this stage. Adam Itecki, though, very strong chance of a podium here, but he'll need to fend off Malta Jakobsen, who hammers the kerb into Rivatsa 1. Tires nicely up to temperature again, so lesser a risk of what happened to Jerome de Sadelier at the restart. This could be a cracking little battle. Homing into just 45 minutes of the race to go. That is a minimum stint length time, but they got a lot of the teams got their silver oh, graded driver in. That's TS Corsa, is it not? Yep. Uh, as the car started by Pietro Gopada. Peccianini, it's so Gopada. it's... it's the Indian yeah. driver Gopada is Part off. Gopada, who uh, is in ACO rules racing for the first time since 2016. And last raced at Imola, Here. amazingly, yes. Yeah, to the Algar Pro Racing LMP2 car. Team Tour in a United Order Sports sandwich. It's a triple-deck sandwich because there's three of the Yorkshire squad cars all together on track. This must be giving Richard Dean a heart attack to see all cars. It's all four so of his cars, isn't it? Because the is fourth it? car, that's the fourth car. <laughs> this, <it's> You're right. <laughs> oh, man. I uh, sincerely hope David Lord, our photographer who's shooting for United this weekend, has got this shot. <laughs> yes. Get them all within frame. Wow. And need someone in the pit lane as well, getting the United reaction. They will not like seeing this. That's nuts at such close quarters, but they're all giving each other racing room, and the team tour car, driven by Michael Markerson, is now clear. All these own, and great result coming for them. Trouble for the 24-7 Motorsport car, by the look of it, it's in the hands of Louis Hamilton-Smith, and that car uh, seems to have stopped briefly on track. It's lost about 25 seconds, and is running again. Oh, we're going to full course yellow. We're going to full course yellow, and that will likely be for the recovery of the 73 car. So not a safety car at this point, but with 44 minutes to go, we're going to full course yellow in about five seconds. Tom Dillman, prior to this latest caution, has just set the fastest lap of the race, amazingly, in the racing full spirit of Le Mans car, number 10, down in 18th position. Remember, Tom Dillman, along with his teammate, won the opening race of this season at Le Castellet. So it all goes quiet again for a short while. We all take a breather, and the TS Corsa Duquesne will be recovered. Uh, the second fastest lap of the race for Tom Dillman. Uh, almost as quick, by the way, and just two positions back is Lawrence Hur. Now, where is Lawrence compared to... He's right behind the leader. I think that's a mechanical problem for TS Corsa because it wasn't an off as such. It's just that realised they're losing power and Gulpada sensibly drives off the circuit to get out of the way of everybody else. So, really unfortunate for TS Corsa, that. So, I think the car either right behind... If we just, no, it's not, they're not the car directly behind him. It's four, three cars back from unlapping himself to go back on the lead lap is Mr Hur, who will, by the way, be making his LMP2 debut at um, Ford Deco Engineering at Le Mans this year. Mm. That is a honour they've earned through uh, the automatic invitation 
for from the, the, from the LMP3 championship yeah, that he won last, last year. year. Yeah, that he had to wait a long time for because that wasn't decided in time for the presentation. It's, it's a new Portimao. lot. Mo Smith who's going to be talking to Haley in just a few moments. Excellent. Well, we'll try and make sense of what's going on under this full course yellow as we head for cool racing. So I'm down here with Morris Smith, just trying to kind of make sense of the beginning of this very punctuated race with uh, full course yellows, as we are in what right now. Um, you successfully completed your stint. I mean, just tell us how, what it's like out there and why it's so tough. Well, <laughs> there was a lot of cars in the gravel, and uh, I don't know if I can make any more sense than you can, but it was uh, very congested and very... Um, very difficult once the sun got down uh, above the trees and the oil got on the on your windshield and there's gravel everywhere and everybody was pushing hard and trying their best and trying to do well on this awesome track um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds like carnage out there. I mean, how did you approach your stint? Just staying safe? Uh, no, basically I have nothing more to live for, and so I just put it down and <laughs> close my eyes and, <laughs> no, uh, just tried to stay on track. I mean, that was our our um, our goal, was to stay on track, and, and we knew it would be like this, and, and it's um, better than hitting the walls, you know, it's gravel that serves a purpose, and, but it's an amazing track and so much fun, and the, so many cars out there, it's crazy. Your teammate Malta is out there, of course, currently sitting in third place. I mean, after the fantastic, he got pole earlier on today in uh, ELMS. Um, he, he, yes, he did. Yeah. I mean, just tell us about that. You know, the, the, being teammates with him, how it is, and how he's how he's performing. Well, he's he's amazing. He's um, uh, so young. I mean, he's eight, eight, just 18, and and is, and he's just such a nice kid. I mean, he's he's a wonder to be around. He was obviously raised by good parents, good grand parents, good family, he has good morals, he's, an, he's a pleasure to be around. And um, for the most part, I don't really like kids, so, <laughs> but, I, but I like him. <laughs> oh, that's, that's lucky. He's very fast, and he's very, um, he's very, it's nice to see him learn, and uh, it's nice to see him improve, and uh, the team here at Cool has good coaching and, and, and really good engineering and great leadership, and, and they all do a great job to help Malta, and so it's, it's fun. And you've just done a great promotion for Cool Racing, so uh, <laughs> everyone's going to want to come and drive here. All right, well, thank you very much, Maurice. Thank you. Speaking of kids that Maurice Smith isn't a big fan of, uh, Graham and I are giggling like small children during that interview. Uh, cracking uh, character, Mo Smith, as it I'm is. sure you've gathered from that. And uh, he'll He's be... been doing some work, hasn't he, over the, the yeah. off-season. He's lost a lot of weight, this Maurice Smith. Uh, yeah. And not just off lost, the beard. Lost a lot of beard as well. Uh, yeah. Anyway, oh, we... But the, the Team Thorcar is jumped at the restart by all three of those United Autosports guys. Well, there were four of them, so <laughs> Well, one got well, us those three are all for position. Back. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and there's and contact behind there. Well, the tour car wasn't overtaken by the third of the United machines, I noticed, and I'm not sure how that ended. But uh, there's Andy Merrick in the 32, Garnet Patterson in the 22, and Wayne Boyd in the 23. But Wayne, yeah, he did get by in the end, Michael Markerson. But that was a tighter affair coming out of Tamburello Corner. They're at Tozer now, so that's United Order Sports up to fifth, sixth, and seventh. Still, though, it's Adam Ateki holding off Milta Jakobsen. Great endorsement there for his young teammate from Mo Smith. A pleasure to hear it as well. I endorse absolutely everything he said about the character of this young man. Mad Seilerhaug, somewhere in that final sector. Now Andy Merrick has squeezed past Michael Markerson. He's able to set the car's best middle sector of the race so far. And likewise, Wayne Boyd does the same in car 23, all reaching now Varianti Alta. And uh, we've seen already too much of cars hitting teammates, so let's try and keep it neat and tidy for United Autosports. Remember, the car in the middle of the more traditionally liveried uh, United Autosports cars also from that awning, though. Uh, car 22 being driven by Garnet Patterson. Change in GT, by the way. The EP Motors car is up to third, uh, second place now. Casper Jensen, third tier, new A, uh, in fourth position for the... Uh, the bullet racing Aston Martin team. Drive through penalty for car 20 for overtaking, join the first safety car. So that's a second penalty going the way of Optimum Motorsport, this time for, uh, well, again, Fred Ike's uh, Mortimer serving a second penalty, or will soon be. 
So it's dropped during them down the first from... safety car, so likely to be Mark Crader who was at fault yeah. there, but so Alex Mortimer will have to take the penalty for it. Yeah, so that car, by the way, uh, was running 11th, now 15th after the drive-through will drop again, I'm afraid. Yeah. So their day, day is not going in the correct direction, is it? And we take it still holding off Jakobsen. There they are. And by the way, they are closing on the leader. And with less traffic around, still got two cars between them and the lead car. But just two cars now. I wonder whether or not this is maybe part of the strategy from Jakobsen. Work up. There we go. That's, uh, that was somehow okay, a little wild over the curbs there. There's the leader, then the two back markers, then second and third. Maybe job one, deal with the traffic, then deal with the second place car if he can. A great run from Adam Itake. Isn't it just, yeah. I've seen him do fine things in the Asia Le Mans series for CD Sport in the past, and this sort of form being shown, driving a good defensive race against, most of us would agree, is one of the real form talents in the championship at the moment. Colin Noble, by the way, not able to take advantage of this battle. It's not closed up. I think he may have had a moment at some point. He was about a second or so behind now, down to five seconds back. And the team tour car, by the way, has pitted. So it's a problem for Michael Markerson. I thought there was a brush going um, with the third of the United cars going by, and I do wonder whether or not he's picked up a puncture. It's either that or we're just getting the penalty uh, through about his car. So is he serving that for overtaking oh, maybe that's during it. the second yep. safety car? We'll find out because uh, will the car rejoin after just a simple drive through or will it need to stop with the team? You can't do the two at the same time if that's the case. No, he's straight it's back out again. So it was a drive through penalty. That's a shame. Yeah. That, ran running, uh, that car running strongly at the start of this Third race. Third place. Third place highest. it was. Right, they've got through past, uh, past the first of their, those traffic cars. One more to go. And ahead, the writer car looking to put another car between himself and his soon to be tormentors. Car 14 reported to the stewards for exiting pit lane with a red light. Yeah, uh, and not on the car, a red light at the end of the pit Indeed. lane indicating that you cannot rejoin that the race. That is James Winslow, 10th place DCAR engineering car, better okay. place than two. Looking for a way through, not a moment to lose, Adam Itteki, just 19 years old, the Frenchman, but already gold rated, doing some good stuff in GT3 racing as well. Oh, big wide moment there Jacobson. from Jacobson, did well to hold that, didn't he? Incredibly so, yeah, I mean, you know how easy it is to lose the car when it's on hard standing, as Jerome de Sadelier proved, but when you've got a wheel in the gravel, that really is nightmarish stuff. It's only overtaken by Colin Noble. That's is that that's not Colin. It's not because it's not a single digit number. No. So Noble's a little way back, isn't he? Four seconds. Forty three car. Thankfully for Jakobsen, he's built himself enough of a lead, which serves as a that's insurance Josh policy there. That's Josh Skelton, who's three laps down, looking to unlap himself. Oh, a slide through there as well. It's really on the edge here, isn't it? Unsurprisingly, Laurence Hurst just set the best sector time of anybody through the first one. This could be a very good lap for the German if it's clear to the finish. Very frustrating for DKR engineering that they're not in the mix. But he has unlapped himself from the leader. Yes, back on the lead lap. Now, another safety car. True. And that, yeah, who knows what might happen. They're down in 19th position. That would be a lot of overtaking. And amazingly, the man ahead of him is Tom Dillman. Oh, a few that's... moments ago, that's, that's at 43. Going for it, no, it's 40, the 40, the car, four zero car. Trouble. That's the car that was in trouble with the radiator at yeah. the start of the race. Theo Vaucher, who was chatting to Haley earlier on during the uh, initial stint for Louis Saint-Juan. Race leader remains Matt Seilerhaug, easy to forget that, but 1.4 seconds still ahead of Adam Itteki, and Itteki being given a bit more breathing space after a very slight error from Malta Jakobsen on the exit of the second Rivatsa. Teinoue has made up two places to second place on the restart in GT. Driven away now here from Fabio Babini, so he's gone by Casper Jensen, he's gone by Fabio Babini, and next target, but some way off, is Gustav Birch, who's done well out of these caution periods, just looking at what that gap is. Over a minute. A minute and ten seconds or thereabouts is the lead gap for the 44 car, and that will have been accentuated by those safety cars, no doubt. 
Awkward exit that time out of Variante Alta for Fabio Babini because of the LMP3 car that he is jostling with. I think that's the target, it's a car. Okay, from AT Racing. And if he can, it'd be wise to let that go. TS Corsa rejoining Four. from a drive through penalty. 14, More 14 dust. car, very, very squirrely and wide. That's Jens Winslow. Exit of Villeneuve Chiquet. It's a drive through penalty for the TS Corsa car. Yeah, and part Gorpard has just served that, Indian yes. driver. So he rejoins in 33rd position. And there are 32 minutes still to go in this race. This last Kern, by the way, aboard the number 66 car. I think that's Daniel Pavlovitz, isn't it? Just to see where those two cars are. And they're going to go on at eight 13. And nine. Uh, yeah, car 13 is 8. You're right, 8th and 9th. This is a battle for 8th position between two very talented drivers who want to watch, two yeah. Duquesnes. They will know each other pretty well, they I would guess, with well. all of their experience around the Nürburgring Nordschleife. So Daniel Kajlvitz in the wheel tracks of the Hegeli by T2 racing car of Lars Kern. With Wayne Boyd, the next car up the road by about five seconds. Uh, Lawrence Heard, by the way, fastest lap of the race now, 138.235 on lap 35. There's some real pace being shown, but by cars they've been delayed. There's going to be places made up here. It's still half an hour to go. I know. I know. Every time I look up at the clock at the top of our screen, I think, really? Another half an hour? Fabulous stuff. But it feels like we've been racing for much longer than two hours already. The extent of the interruption and the incident that we've had so far. Classic Michelin Le Mans Cup fair. And I'm remembering back to some of the incident-filled races that we've had as part of this championship here at Imola previously as well. I'm going to take heat now with no traffic between him and the target. Target is the white car ahead. It's the lead of the race. And he's broken the toe from Melter Jakobsen. Fine stint this from Adam Ateki. Jakobsen still has traffic between him and the CD Sport car. CD Sport will be going to Le Mans this year in LMP2. Thanks to a championship win in LMP3. In fact, 1-2 in the Asia Le Mans series this year. With this car, I believe, being the championship winning car. We misidentified, by the way, this being as the corporate colours of CD Sport. They're not. They're mm. the colours of Michael Jensen, who owns the car, also owns the car we'll see in the LMS next uh, tomorrow, uh, which he drives for um, for RLRM Sport. And on occasion when CD Sport have shown up with two cars, they carry the same livery because he owns both cars. Correct. So that's the reason. It's, it's not a CD we, Sport livery. We've got a full course yellow coming. Wow, OK. Well, it's been a little while since we've last had a caution, so why not chuck another one into the mix? At least it's not a safety car, though, so it shouldn't, technically speaking, uh, affect the gaps between the cars. They are pretty small at the sharp end, though. Mad Seiler Haug's only leading by, well, that came down a lot on the last lap, 0.6 of a second through the last split. It's that dense. might be a, com a complexity of some cars slowing and others not, though. Down to 80 kilometres per hour we go. Trouble for the 72 car. And that is... So this isn't to do with the full-course no. yellow, is it? This is post the decision to go into another caution. It's got another drive-through penalty for the car 67. We haven't got a 67. Right, so that's a slight so typo. Is that the 57? I'm hoping it's not the 76. Me too, race leader. So needs to be clarified as to which car that is, because calling a car 67, and you can, that, now we can hear the H24 car. I just heard that. Uh, it's Mo Smith on. That's not Mo. It's a little bit like Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was looking down at my paperwork to have missed that joke, but I like it. Oh, he's got nothing else to do. <laughs> Go out and wave some flags. <laughs> Take the pressure off having to watch this race from the screens. Engine cover off on... Is this the TS Corsa car? I think it might be back on pit lane. Yeah, that would fit, because all the other cars have been yeah. in for a while. That is the TS Corsa car. So, Park Corpada, unfortunately for him, a quick racing driver and a long time away from motorsport actually great to have him back in the aco rules paddock but it's also i'm afraid been reported to the stewards for speeding in the pit lane it's not going their way today is it we're going not to go back all. to green flag racing in 25 seconds is that the gearbox that's locked or the drive train at least 
and maybe can't change gear now in the TS Corsa car, so they're doing an electrical reset. So the full course yellow remains out, but will be withdrawn in the next five seconds. Can we get to the finish without any further need to quell the speed of this race? Green flag shown everywhere. And Mad Seilerhaug almost outbraked himself into Rivaxa. It is so tricky to come down into there when everything starts to cool down. And what about this for pressure? Adam Iteki all over the rear of Mad Seilerhaug, who needs to up the speed, but he, he hasn't got a clear road in front of him. Needs to get by the MV2S car, can't do it through the kink there at turn number one. And now down towards Tamburello. I'm not sure the MV2S car is going to give him any space there either. So that's car 28. Remember the dramas that we had for car 29, the sister machine at MV2S, and the two uh, issues they, or the major issue that they encountered during qualifying as well. Out of Villeneuve go the top two. There's a bit of a gap back to Malta Jakobsen now. Something, oh, and there's two cars, two further cars off in the background at Varianti Villeneuve as well. Squirm and a slide from Mad Seilerhaug. Here comes Adam Itecki trying to get broadside alongside the race leader. Trying to find the inside got line him, of Piratella. Got him, got him. Should have him. Yes, change of race lead, and that is the CD Sport car to the top. Great that stuff. Built up over a period of a couple of corners, cool racing. Want to know where Malta Jakobsen is, though, because he has lost a little bit of time from the restart. And is that an indication that maybe the pace from the cool racing cars not quite as hot as it was before the first of the full course yellows? He'll get it back again, Malta Jakobsen, but time is just drifting away a little bit now. 25 minutes still to go. Yeah. Sandra so Takey up the inside of the H24 car, back out and still running. And that was a lock up there, and that's going to leave him as just, if, if, oh, and again, leave him as almost a sitting duck there for Jakobsen. As he managed to constantly can't see behind here, but Jakobsen was right with him. It was Seiler Haug with the error, and that's two sequential laps now where he has struggled to get the car slowed sufficiently into Rivatsa 1 for the Norwegian. So Norway versus Denmark here for second and third positions. And Noble is catching this pair as well. It was four seconds back before that last full course yellow. Now under two seconds back, he's had a better restart. Still 25 minutes to go. Tough moments for writer engineering. There is uh, Colin Noble behind. As Jakobsen, I thought he was going to try and move around the so outside of Tozer there, which is a, a very uh, difficult place to leave yourself on the exit of Tozer because you can so easily be forced out onto the grass by your rival. There's damage on the front of that um, cool racing car. The front cowling, if you look on the left hand side. Yeah, front left. That, that has got damage. OK, yes. It's, it's flapping. Dive plane, maybe, no, no, its no. way loose, the, the, or is it the splitter on the knee? No, it's it's in the windscreen. Look at the uh, where the number puddle is. It's not sitting right. OK. Pay close attention to that as, uh, well, need a camera on the other side of the road to uh, get a, a good view of it. Team, I'm sure, have recognised that as well. Yeah, yeah OK. That is loose. Something's so loose on the, the around front of the sill. Car. You're talking about uh, at the bottom of the windscreen. Drive through penalty mm. for 73 confirmed for speeding in pit lane. Matt Seilerhaug, a big look in the mirrors. He senses danger here with Malta Jakobsen able to draw alongside, but can't do it yet. The right hand kink's not helpful for Jakobsen, but he's going to get two wheels on the curb there, which will unsettle the car. He should be able to now block pass and does so into Tamburello. Really good heads up driving there. Spotted the mistake from Mad Seilerhaug coming out of Varianti Outer actually at the top of the hill. And he was short of pace, only very, very slightly, but a couple of Ks maybe. Team Virage off the road again. That's the 72 car once more in strife on the run down towards turn one. And the approach to Tamburello after, actually after turn one and turned sharp right to join the marshals there. Yeah, something went wrong and went wrong big, didn't it? Just as that uh, was getting underway, that overtaking manoeuvre. It's been an uncommonly rough race on reliability and incident. 
So that is uh, Matisse Poulet, by the way. Uh, second year in the Le Mans Cup after a race last year with Team Virage and uh, first race of the season here in Italy. He actually did the final round of the championship last year at Portimao. Adi Miteki now as the new race leader, trying to work his way by some of these back markers, but it's a delicate situation. He MV2S. He made it. It was a, there were a couple of uh, heart the mouth moments there, but he's Just made it through. Now Jakobsen has got a following through. Got three cars now between them. The gap has come down to 2.6 seconds, plus the traffic. That was Emilian Kacht, who is the teammate to Christoph Kresp in MV2S's second car, the orange and black machine, number 28. But Kacht was aware of what was going on and, uh, well, relatively aware. I mean, it's tough when you're, in, when you're in the midfield to know who's leading here and who you need to let by. We have seen one or two blue flags today, but possibly not quite enough. But there's some in the background, as I mentioned the phrase. So it's all that's down to the marshals being able to read the race and know who is leading, who's second, third, and who are a lap down. Something about Jakobsen, Jakobsen's car has not got the pace it should have. Well, it's not got the pace that it had prior to the first full course yellow, I would say. So it's made it by the first of those uh, three LMP 3s It's now got the Honda as well. He's not got the pace of Adam Ateki in clear air. He just hasn't. We've had, uh, I'll remind you, three safety cars and two full course yellows. The amount of safety car that, that uh, when you add up the times that it's been out on track, 37 minutes wow. of, a, of an hour and 50 minute race. And we're going to go course full yellow. course yellow that'll, again. That'll be for Sorry, the, sorry that'll folks, that's probably car. my fault. Sorry talking about cautions it's and another one your happens. Fault. Yeah. <laughs> that's say sorry to the viewers. I'm very, very sorry to go. everybody involved. We can move I, on now. I was really enjoying that. And now we've got to have another <laughs> full course yellow. So everyone, their speed's tempered to 80 kilometres per hour in the golden sunlight here at Imola. That was an excellent point that I hadn't thought about, made by Mark Morris Smith earlier on, the low sun. Yes. You know, this is a late race when you think about the, when the other races of the, of the year are held in the weekend. They're normally about a 4, maybe 4.30 start. This, yep. this was due to be... 5.30. We actually got going just after 5.45. Still racing at nearly 16 minutes past seven local time. And when you've got the track surface covered in some coolant and oil, and then you've got low sun, horrible conditions. Really tough. So 72 car joins the growing list of cars out of this race. So the 72 is out. TS Corsa back out on track uh, after their latest penalty. Still running, by the way, the H24 car. Stefan McKelmy is still running in 34th position, but one car ahead of him has just stopped. We've lost the four car for Nielsen Racing. We didn't see why. We did see one off-track moment for John Melson. The MV2S uh, for STA Racing car of uh, Jerome uh, de Savalier after that incident with the 11 on the restart. The 11 as a result of that incident, the restart. The 31 car, Quattro Lendudis. We're going to go back green in 30 seconds, by the way. That was the nerf into the barrier. ANS Motorsport, Jonathan Brossard, after a spin and a pretty dangerous attempt at rejoining. And Klaus Abelin, the Frick Daily Racing Team number 30, I think basically they gave up the ghost. They had uh, front-end damage, didn't they, early in the race. There was then a further problem, and I think they decided to retire the car at that point. So we've lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars, all LMP3s. And we're lucky, to be blunt, not to have lost another seven. There's been a lot of incident in this race. CD Sport lead. We're going back to uh, Green Flag Racing now. There we go, right on cue. And for fans of H24, Stefan Riquelme is still circulating. With 20 minutes to go, that car has been refuelled on a couple of occasions, as now the cat amongst the pigeons on the exit of Villeneuve corner two abreast at least. What's happening here then, Graham? That's uh, Andy Merrick and Colin Noble have both gone past Mad Salah uh, as Yes, and in Noble the 76. Noble is up to third, 2.4 seconds behind Melty Jakobsen. Now, if Jakobsen has got a car that's hobbled, Colin Noble's the sort of guy that will want to take full advantage of that. Indeed. Yeah, completely agree. So, Noble... Merrick running. is ahead of, of, uh, of Noble now. He is to third. So Andy Merrick in the number 32 car up to third spot. Colin Noble could not hold him back. And he'll find it very, very difficult to get in front of the Welshman, I would have thought. 
We've got Mads Seilerhaug just trying to hang on to any positions he can now, because I don't think the 76 car is quite on song anymore either, whether he's pushed too hard on the tyres in the early phase of his stint. Tricky to say from this distance. But Malte Jakobsen's lack of pace, drop of pace, is may well be to, connected to the damage that you've seen on the number 69. So this is the, the, the chasing pair now, Andy Merrick with Colin Noble. This, this car, uh, these two cars together, look and see what they can do. They are 4.5 seconds back from Melty Jakobsen as they, uh, the race went back to green. They're going to do what they can to close this down. Behind them, still for position, Matt Silverhaug with Wayne Boyd and Garnet Patterson. It's fifth, sixth and seventh. Then Lars Kern, five seconds back. Daniel Kielwitz has dropped back a bit off the back of the Higley by T2 racing car. And running up the top ten, James Winslow uh, in the DKR engineering car number 14. It's still not done. There are still places to be gained and lost in this. And plenty of opportunities and plenty of battles underway. They're going to give just that. It is great to see Andy Merrick back, by the way, um, after missing the opening round. Uh, this year at Paul Ricard with a family emergency. Pleased to hear that things are going better on that front. It's a drive-through penalty for the car 14. That will drop that car out of the top 10. It will go the way of the Graf Racing 57 car. And Andy is pushing and pushing very hard indeed. Car 14 is the second DKR engineering entry for James Winslow, another Duquesne, and uh, the question of what might have been for DKR, because their pace definitely there for the number three car. And I tell you, James Winslow's not too shabby either in the 14. As uh, a couple of those cars now cross the line. United Order Sports versus Nielsen Racing. Confirmation of James Winslow's penalty for exiting the pit lane with the lights on red at the end. Over the line again. Now, visibility starting to become a problem because of that uh, setting sun now. So it's getting very low in the sky. And uh, helmet visors need to be correctly positioned so that's not too much of a distraction. Sila Haug with a, more than a couple of glances in the mirror there to check out where Ulsterman Wayne Boyd is. Lights flashing frantically for the pursuing car and another entry from United Autosports. Wayne Boyd, massively experienced in this class. Matt Zeele Howard, far less so. Bit of a lock up there. It was. Has that just given Wayne Boyd the opportunity to get under the rear wing? There's no out dragging opportunity there, though. Great stuff now. We've got this, this, this race going under green. Out the inside, no. Yeah, no not room quite there. close enough. One or two might have tried that, but I think it would have ended in disaster. Wayne Boyd showing how bumpy it is in places around this Imola circuit as well, when you're slightly off the racing line. It's a drive-through penalty for overtaking a safety car from the eighth-place car now. So Lars Cairn is going to be coming down pit lane as well. And that will give the place to Daniel Kylewitz, eighth position, and also promote James Well, possibly not James Winslow, because he's had to get to take his own penalty and in car 14. And it's a drive penalty for Colin Noble for ah. constant abuse of track limits. The fourth place car, so that's tenth, eighth, and fourth with drive through through the last five minutes. They're catching up on the to-do list here, aren't they? Are there any more to come? Yeah, there's an awful lot of work to get through during a race, and uh, as you get closer to the finish, they will eventually catch up. The intro's been so, so busy over the last hour and 36 minutes. 14 of those minutes still to go. Adam Iteki, just 19 years old, Frenchman, but gold-rated already. You might not know the name too well, but uh, he'll be continuing to build his profile throughout season 2022. We've uh, said a lot about Malta Jakobsen. But at the moment, he doesn't have the answer to Iteki's pace. That might well be more to do with his car rather than his desire to get in front of the oh, Frenchman who leads the race, that's Matt Seiderhaug. It's going to lose both those positions there. That's, so that's Wayne Boyd, Boyd through. And, and Garner Patson as well, he's through. And they've got another place to gain with Colin Noble due down pit lane any time now. Was going just wide, but a ah. good defence from him, but just overcooked it. Yeah. And 
fascinating to see then Wayne Boyd looking over to make sure he got the necessary clearance to take the racing line into Toza. He was far enough ahead. Garnet Patterson having to go around the outside of Mad Seiler to uh, confirm the position. Still 13 minutes to go. Still more throws of the dice here to come. Adam Ateki is driving away though, two seconds to the good. Melter Jakobsen though, getting quicker. Took six tenths out of the lead, did his fastest lap of the race last time around. What's he been looking after? There he is, behind the two cars uh, that uh, the 37 car has just gone by. Has he still got something to offer here, Johnny? Well, there's a lot to be said for just easing back the pace a little bit, nursing your tyres. You've got more then to use in the closing stages. Goes past the Ferrari, he's got one car between him and the leader. The gap is 1.4 seconds. And he's Iteki. coming back at him. Iteki's been leaving, leaving nothing on the table whatsoever in terms of pace. We wondered whether Malta Jakobsen had just lost something, whether that was damage related or overcooking his tyres. Has he actually been thinking about the long game throughout this so that he can push in the closing 12, 13 minutes? We're at that point now where he needs to make it to matter. And that gap, as you can see from our graphics, has been tumbling. It's only 1.4 seconds through the last split, which was the run into Varianti Villeneuve. And those at CD Sport will be on the radio now to Adam Itecki to say, this is not finished yet. You are about to see yet another wave from Malta Jakobsen. 10 minutes to go, or 11 minutes to go, and Jakobsen is through the traffic. It's now a visual gap, and it's a visual gap despite the traffic that is still coming down. Lars Kern has taken his penalty for Hegeli by T2 Racing, so he's back in the race rejoining 12th. It's a good start for that team. Yeah. Be a different driver squad next time around. The warning flag for Andrea Montemini abusing track limits. He's old enough to know better. <laughs> But uh, Hegeli, for, for followers of the 24H series, they've run Porsches in that in the past in the similar paint scheme that is carried on their LMP3 this weekend. They've clearly. run Spa 24 as well. Yes, yes. And uh, clearly their priority right now is to get to Le Mans. And Lars Kern, will he he'll race at Le Mans before Lars Kern? Probably no, he's not, not. going to race. It's going to be Mark Bessing. Ah, OK. As you've explained many yeah. times. So we, well, we need Kern at uh, Le Mans. Uh, maybe that's uh, a couple of seasons away yet. Uh, but uh, this is, by the way, an intriguing uh, little battle. This is DKR Engineering's uh, Lance Hurt closing in on the racing spirit of Le Mans, the Maten car ahead of Tom Dillman. Two very quick men indeed. This is a battle for, where are they now? 17th. And in fact, oh, Ale sideways, tyre gone down on the 32 Andy car. Merrick. It's Andy Merrick. That was a tyre failure, not a mistake from Andy. And he loses it at Varianti Villeneuve. And he's in the he's in the It's litter. already gone before he turns in, does very well to control it through the first left-hander, but I think he knew the game was up through this, the next one. This might have to be another caution period. Actually, that was Tamburello. So the, it's it turns three, four and five, and he's kept it on the straight and narrow all oh. the way to Villeneuve. No, no tire left at all. No, it's uh, down to just the wheel rim at that point. So he must have wondered what on earth was going on at Tamburello where the car, whether he thought it was contact initially, but Just then he approaches Villeneuve with only three tyres still existing on the car. Does nobody want to win this race? <laughs> um, uh, Colin Noble body up to third, but will have to uh, be down pit lane. Malte Jakobsen is on the tail of the leader. We've got nine minutes to go. Full course yellow is coming. Another full course yellow and nine minutes to go. I think that, we still. That's the damage. That's the damage. We you might still now. get some racing into this. You know, it depends how quickly, as the grins are starting to break out at Cool Racing, how can they or how quickly can they recover Andy Merrick's car? And will that allow what a two, three lap dash to the finish? Lucia, money on for this. There is Merrick's car beached. And there is a Manitou not far away from there, so... I think we're going back green. Let's keep our fingers crossed that this is a quick recovery. And let's face it, all the marshals here at Imola have had a lot of practice at recovering cars. They don't know what's happening down at Cool Racing. Will we restart or not? If they do... Happened to, what Mal happened to Malta Jakobsen? I swear I just saw the CD Sport car coming by, yeah. and Jakobsen was not directly behind it. Has he eased off far uh, well, more did, readily did, did than Did he respond Niteki? more quickly to the... Yeah, yeah. Just to 
you know, to be safe rather than sorry and get down to the 80 kph. Well, this is quickly. being done at a pace. It really is. And, and we'll I'll say again, thank you so much to the marshals. Yeah. They've had a very busy afternoon. It has been 30 degrees out here. They're there in full work gear and helmets. This is not an easy job to do in these conditions. No. And deliberately, a lot of them are in fireproof gear as well, particularly these marshals that have to go down to the scene of incidents that might involve fire on an already very warm day. Thankfully, though, for Andy Merrick, it is just a tyre down. He remains in the car, but pointless putting him back on the track because he's not going to go any further. Colin Noble, by the way, takes the opportunity under yellow uh, to observe that, uh, full, that uh, drive through and will emerge still in eighth position. Not sure you can do that though. Uh, well, did he do it just before? It yeah, came okay. Out? Well, if he got there in before the, the full course yellow came the out, gap. that's probably Look allowed. At the gap here. Yeah. That, yeah. Those cars were nose to tail. I sincerely hope that Adam Mateki has not taken liberties there under the full course yellow. Yeah. Or is there a radio issue because he'll be counted into the full course yellow and he can't hear the radio? I don't know what reception's like here, particularly at Aqua Minerale, which is much lower down in the dip there so it ensures well, you must ensure that radio communication can be uninterrupted around the whole 4.9 kilometers to explain what i'm talking about in case it's not obvious before we went to full course yellow those two cars were half a second apart he didn't quite have his nose underneath the rear wing of the cd sport car but Milty Jakobsen was less than a car length car's length behind now look at the gap now Full course yellow but it's is growing. Is, it's growing. It is going up. Has he got a problem? Has he got a problem? Either Jakobsen's got a problem or the speed set for the 37 is way out. But we would have we would have detected that problem already. The number of full course yellows we've already had in this race. If it's about a what did I say? Three minutes odd lap this time for Adam Mitecki. Yeah, three. There, there's a Tecky. Where is Jakobsen? Three oh three. There he is. And we're back to green. 303 is that too is 303 a lap time too fast for 80 kilometers per hour around Imola I thought I'd seen a 309 previously 306s 305s that's the only other doubt is that for some reason the telemetry or rather the uh, calibration it wasn't a full lap remember it wasn't a full lap okay because it okay. came the full course yellow came out he gets another car in between the third pair of them is that a choice of Mato Jakobsen to rain? No, no, not, not with five minutes so. left. No, no. And not to, not to allow another car to be put between the two of them. Hence the puzzled looks down at Cool Racing, as in what's going on and why is this crap going to, to five seconds, five plus seconds. It's down to 1.4 now. I do absolutely see that skew if nose yeah. uh, immediately in front of Malta Jakobsen's windscreen. It could be just visually distracting. The other thing is visibility is not great in LMB cars. No, indeed. And, you know, so, but bear in mind where it is in his view, it's it's blocking it's his view up, of the apex. It? Yeah. Yeah. And he's sitting on the left hand side of the car, he isn't is. he? But then when you're going into Variante Alta, Correct. that's exactly the area you want to be able to see with clear visibility. Was there contact between a P3 car and a GT car at Alta? Yes. And that was Laurence Hoor in the number three. And which of the GMB cars? 88 car in fourth place. So not the class leader, no. Gustav Bier. But uh, is under threat from the third of the GMB cars. It is still the 44 car leading. That gap, though, that was over a minute, is down to 21 seconds to Bullet Racing's Tio Nui. Running out of time, though. Here comes Jakobsen. So, what a heck of a race when we've had green. Two possibles during that full course yellow. Malta Jakobsen had a, a problem, maybe related to the damage, which meant that he couldn't go as quickly as he, you are allowed to go in the full course yellow, or Adam Atecki was going too quickly, which meant that the gap between the top two cars was growing. The, what I'd say to you is the, the relevant time is not the relevant lap time under yellow is not anybody else other than those two. There's a six second difference in the lap time under full course yellow between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's the reason why it went from two seconds to four seconds to five seconds. Yeah. And now we have a 1.3 second gap. It would have been a lot, lot less than that. The idea of a full course yellow is that the gaps you have when you go into it should remain the same coming out the other side. Well, through all of that, uh, Matt Silahad, by the way, has been the winner through this because with that uh, drive-through from Colin Noble and the trouble for Andy Merrick, there's off again. It's not a happy car, it's not. that. 
and the damage doesn't look as evident. It, it changes. It does. It, 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 it's almost like a bevel. Yeah, it's a loose bit of bodywork, isn't it? it Which is. starts to rise at higher speed as the air's getting underneath it, and then it lowers back down to its original position in the slower speed corners. Under three minutes to go. We don't have to worry about extra laps being strapped onto the end of this race. It is a straight one hour and 50 minutes. And when the clock reads zero, the next completed lap will be the final tour. Adimiteki, relatively speaking, is comfortable now as the race leader at just under two seconds, the leading margin. Malta Jakobsen has given all that he can. It actually sits on the right-hand side of the car, beg your pardon, within the 69 cool racing car. And Adam Uteki sitting on the same side, the right-hand side as well. But nevertheless, it's compromising Malta Jakobsen's view into those right-hand corners. Two minutes to go. It will be this lap and one more, I think, Johnny. Yeah, agreed, because they're... Uh, in the middle sector right now, which is the se sector of the lap which runs from Villeneuve down towards Aqua Minerale. So including Piritella, this left-hander. One more drive through this time for the 61 car, sixth out of the seven GT3 cars. Andrea Montemini will be rolling down pit lane, but I think will remain in sixth place. What's still to be won? Well, the race, but I don't think he's got it in this car, you know. No. Earlier on, I would have said absolutely, absolutely. yes. But Jakobsen was on a tear, but the, oh, it's, it's, uh, the exit there for oh, one of the United Autosports cars is massively compromised by the TS Corsa car. That was part Gorpada actually trying to stay out of the way, I think, as best he could, but, but there was, was some confusion. He was hit by the 23 car, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, 23 trying to put a lap. So it's Wayne Boyd, third position with not a moment to lose, and, and a big wiggle as a result. So the... is coming back here at Garner Patterson. Uh, yes, Patterson in fourth, and Sila Haug not giving this one up yet. No. So under a minute to go, the race leader crosses the line now. So this will be, and is confirmed as, the final lap of an incident back from start to finish. There's been all sorts going on in this race. Fantastic stuff from Mateki. Let's not take that away. No, no. We've been talking about wanting a battle, of course we do, but don't take away from the fact that Adam Mateki in the CD Sport number 37 car fended off a fully lit Malta Jakobsen uh, in this car and has done so for just about all of the green flag running in this second half of this race. Yeah. Uh, it's a phenomenal drive from Adam Mateki. The 19-year-old really coming of age a couple of years early, you might say. This is one of those standout races where you go, your eyes are wide open to Adam Mateki and uh, a championship charge, quite possibly, for CD Sport. He is that good and has European Le Mans Series experience as well from Trouble last the year. 57 car. 57 Luke, is a little way down. That's, that's uh, the crash oh, no, car. Eighth, eighth position, loses a spot. I think he's been off. Ryan Harper Ellum. And this is trouble for the H24 car right at the end, or just trying to get home. Well, it's going to be, luck by the look of it, a race finish for that car. Yes. Let's not take that away. Stefan Raquelmi still 15, circulating. 15 laps down it may be, but it'll be in the history books. Won't be an issue for the race leader, though, because uh, the H24 car is already in the first sector on the final lap. Meanwhile, into and out of the Ravazza left-handers will come Adam Iteki, and in the CD Sport car number 37, along with his teammates, uh, Fabian Michal, they take victory. The team from Spain, Michal up on the wall there to call his man home, Adam Iteki. And oh, it's trouble. It's potentially, trouble. potentially, we have another twist in the tail here wow. because all of a sudden we have a report that car 37 has been uh, addressed by the stewards, or there is a report in with the stewards for abusing track limits, and that nearly always a drive results in a penalty. And that drive through would be 30 seconds added, yeah. and that would drop that car way down, down to seventh. Seventh position, if that's off the podium. Well, well, well. So, d does that promote Malta well, Jakobsen and Cool Racing? We're going to have to wait. Well, we don't know whether there's any other reports about track limits going to be issued either yet. But Car 37 is reported to the stewards for abusing track limits. That's all we can tell you at this stage. Meanwhile, the GT3 winner has not yet crossed the line. Car 44 just heading down the hill and into Rivatsa now. Here he is, Gustav Beer, in Car 44. 
four and his teammate already up on the pit wall with Jens Moller who drove a really good opening stint actually to fend off a number of other cars in and around there's the H24 That's getting to the race. finish uh, yeah a moment in history there but the GMB Motorsport Honda NSX crosses the line now Gustav Birk and Jens Moller are winners in Imola as the sun continues to set ahead of Teo Nui and uh, Stephen Patrick's bullet racing Aston Martin with Fabio Babini and Emilio Busnelli for Ebi Motors third and a big golf clap to the Aston Martin team they took a minute out of that lead in that last stint a wow. minute was taken from that lead that's pretty astonishing stuff well that wasn't the cleanest of races in terms of green flag running it's wasn't the easiest of races to follow, but we sometimes like those. But there was never a dull moment, was there? Not at all. And particularly that restart where we didn't have the race leader behind the safety car. And it was absolute carnage then. With the then race leader, Adam Itecki, having to pick his way through, what, about 10 cars between him and the safety car. Here is confirmation of the race result as things stand. This is very much provisional. 53 laps, Adam Itecki, Fabian Michel, the, lin the, we the winners, the leaders at this stage from Cool Racing's Malta Jakobsen number 69, then the two United Auto Sports cars, 23 ahead of 22. So Wayne Boyd and Gar Garnet Patterson bringing those cars to the finish ahead of Writer Engineering's Mads Seilerhag. It is confirmed now as a drive-through penalty for CD seconds. Sport, which will be added to their race time, and it will be uh, 30 seconds added to their total time. It's, been, it's already been adjusted. Cool and Racing yeah. win the race. The 69 car wins this race. Malthy Jakobsen and, and Mo Smith. Mo Smith take the, the win, and it's United Autosport second and third on the podium with the 23 and the 22 cars. The 37 car, after a magnificent run from Adam Itake, just taking too many liberties, it seems, with the track limits and drops that car, disastrous, down to sixth position, but finishes, well... <sighs> Yes, just ahead, just ahead of Colin Noble in seventh. Will we ever know where that final infringement happened? Oh, Was been, it on the final lap? Just been adjusted for our overall classification. Yeah. Well, well, well. So it was John Showman and Wayne Boyd who now are moved up to second position in car 23 and the 22 car of Garnet Patterson and the Australian driver Andres Latour Cannon who started that car also on the podium ahead of Mad Seilerhaug, a real up and down race for Ryder Engineering. Brilliant stint from Freddie Hunt. And it was very good from Mad Seilerhaug as well. But the performance of the car, whether the tyres dropped away, tricky to say. And uh, Mads will be the only man who knows the answer. But he did have a one or two off track moments into the gravel as well. Ryder Engineering from fourth on the grid finished fourth in the race after the craziness around them. Daniel Karlwitz makes the top five. Adam Itecki inserted into sixth position ahead of Colin Noble's Nielsen Racing car that he shares with Tony Wells. And Cool Racing have got the news that they are the winners because they kept their car within the white lines. And that is often so key. Well, 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 yet again, a decision at the death in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. It's the most bonkers thing in endurance racing the hot this whole series fantastic stuff again yeah gt3 won by gmb motorsport we'll of course move to the topic of gt3 in a moment but let's hear from our winners i'm down here with malta Jak jacobson and morris smith come and get in away i mean what a mad race uh, you were you were sitting in second up until just a few seconds uh, ago uh, just tell us about how it went for you you were really up the front really kind of attacking uh, number 37 car yeah mo did a fantastic start um started p15 and on the first lap before the safety car he was up into 10th position and he did a really brilliant stint Obviously, there was a lot of full course yellows and stuff where we lost a bit of time compared to the leading car. But we managed to gain the gap back. And then because he did too many track limits, we got the win at the end. So, yeah, obviously, it would have been nice to get the win on track. But we had our paper clear. So we got the win at the end. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Malta Jakobsen says we have our paper clear. I'm afraid there's another message now that appeared at the bottom of our screen, which includes the 69, which may well involve an illegal overtake on the yellows. We'll explore that in due course. 
Have you got about two days to witness the highlights of this race? Because they started as soon as we were underway. We barely completed a lap of the second round of the Michelin Le Mans Cup. It returns to Imola after a six-year gap. Uh, brilliant to be back in Emilia Romagna and a good getaway from Jerome de Sadelier for the MV2S crew. Leo Weiss tried to get across the nose of the car that we thought was going to take the win. CD Sport and Animiteki carnage at Toza for the first run through this left-hander at Turn 7 with cars left, right and centre, including Rob Hodes for Team Virage in the kitty litter very early on. This would bring out the first of three safety cars. There was damage, unfortunately, for the side of the number 40 Graf car of Louis Saint-Jouin and one or two other cars having to limp back to the pits for emergency work. Then there was some contact between the bullet racing Aston Martin and a, quite an audacious manoeuvre from Crichton Lentudis in uh, that blue and white LMP3 car. Thankfully, Stephen Patrick was able to get away from that scene and eventually finish on the podium in GT3. A spin for the ANS motorsport car of Jonathan Brossard, and Brossard would eventually incur the wrath of the stewards for driving the wrong way at Toza Corner and that resulted in Klaus Abelin having to take avoiding action just nosing very slightly into the barriers at turn seven then at the restart Jerome de Sadelier making a very uncharacteristic error looping the car at Rivazza that unfortunately claimed Leo Weiss's machine as well for WTM racing more spinners this time at Varianti Villeneuve Jack Wolf off the road in the number 43 spirit by spirit of, of racing uh, Le Mans car and a heavy impact into the barrier also at Toza there. Jerome de Sadelier would get out of the car and assess exactly what went wrong. Eventually, Adam Itecki, the car started by Fabian Michel, would work its way to the front. This was coming out of the mandatory pit stops. The other Team Virage car would stop abruptly with Matisse Poulet at the wheel with the marshals down at post number two. And Malta Jakobsen squeezing by Mad Seilerhag there into Tamburello corner. This was a horror moment for Andy Merrick, a tyre letting go on the run into the first chicane, but it wouldn't fully bite until he got to Varianti Villeneuve, and that would bring out the final full course yellow of the race. On the road, Adam Itecki crossed the line as the race winner. However, he was then given a penalty for breaching the track limits, which would take him down to sixth position, and Malta Jakobsen and Morris Smith, it appears to us, have inherited the win. So confirmation of the positions, although I am mindful of the possible overtaking message at the bottom of our screen between car 69, Cool Racing, yep. and car 76, which uh, is the writer engineering car at turn one. Did that overtake happen under yellows whilst there was an incident at turn one? Might have actually been the incident that, could, that was involving Matisse Poulet. I'm trying to think what else has happened at turn one. Uh, turn well, the, one, it was... The it was car was off on the driver's right yeah. at the marshal post. Yes. Uh, it was the, uh, the Virage car. The Virage yeah. car of uh, Matisse Poulet. So was there a, an illegal overtake there? We're not going to show you the graphic of our positions just yet because um, that's clearly being spoken about in race control as we speak. Hearing that the European Le Mans series race tomorrow has been cancelled, will they catch up with the workload in race control <laughs> after that one? Absolutely you jest, not. of course. That but is a joke. Yeah, <laughs> we're very much looking forward to that. If, um, well, I'd like a few uh, fewer safety car and full course yellows, but all of the action, if possible, in the LMS tomorrow. If you thought you recognised, by the way, a uh, familiar face in the background in that crowd in the white Honda overalls, that was Marco Bonanomi, uh, who is part of the support team for the GMB racing efforts uh, in his role uh, with Jazz Engineering in Milan, the ex Audi LMP factory driver. Indeed, LMP1 factory driver. I remember that year at Le Mans when they had four. Are 18s probably, and Marco was in one of them. Well, they are 15s in those days. Anyway, very. Uh, it was a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. Lovely bloke. Uh, I went to do some testing with some of their academy drivers. Um, I think in 2020, at the, uh, at the very end of the first lockdown, and superb driver coach. Uh, it was a delight to see how he interacted with a couple of emerging young talents there. 69 car at the moment is our overall LMP3 winner, but we'll remind you there is an investigation underway about possible overtaking under yellow. The two cars involved were the 69 and the 76, that was the writer engineering car, 
could this be the ultimate irony that it puts the Ryder car back onto the podium? Uh, by the way, that would be, I think, if it happens like that, this is the professional championship. Yeah, level pegging after two races. Yeah. Racing Spirit of Le Mans and Cool Racing, both on 25 points from the 29 MV2S Forestier racing car on 19, which did not score this weekend. That's the 29 that we lost at the restart. So fairly low scoring, actually, yeah. so far, and that uh, suggests how how many uh, incidents we've had in only two races. Alexander Matchell and Malte Jakobsen and Morris Smith and Tom Dillman provisionally all leading the championship, therefore. And uh, Jakobsen, um, well, it's all about uh, where you score the wins and who it scores is. the wins first, if, if the championship needed to be decided today, which thankfully it doesn't, because there are a whole lot more races still to go, including two Road to Le Mans events in about four weeks' time. So our Aussie duo from the non-United Coloured United car. Yes. And uh, great to see them with a first podium, the Michelin Le Mans Cup. So it's Andres Latour and Garnet Patterson. Garnet Patterson, the two Aussies. On the other side of the podium will be Wayne Boyd and John Showerman. Yep. And John. in the middle, even though discussions continue on, Malta Jakobsen and Maurice Smith. And the messages at the bottom of our screen have now disappeared. So, well... We'll play stay, hashtag wait and see. Yeah, stay tuned to, as we get the national anthem of the winning team. Cool Racing are winners again in the Michelin Le Mans Cup to the delight of Malta Jakobsen, to the delight of Maurice Smith who puts, always puts the Michelin Cup on backwards and there's also a team member represented from Cool Racing as well who've worked incredibly hard on some of the strategy. Not only do these drivers get much younger these days and so do the, the team manager, not team manager, but team chief engineer potentially up there on the podium as well for Cool Racing. Getting pretty dark out there, but that makes the podium them all the more dramatic. Doesn't it? And it's great to see LMP3 Racing Santa back up there, where he deserves to be. Loving to pieces. One of my favourite people in this paddock. I think his attitude to it, his outlook to it, his passion for it is exactly yeah. what fuels the enthusiasm here. And those two together in this race, they'll be back together tomorrow for the European Le Mans series for four hours more of this madness. <laughs> Um, but there's some stories to be written. And there'll be a lot of drivers who've never raced here at Imola, including Mo, and uh, they'll want to rush back as soon as possible. They've all loved uh, it, haven't they? Uh, yeah, I th well, you we talked to one or two that didn't get a race finish there, yeah. and possibly not, but uh, that's not always down to the track. There were a lot of cars out there, 40 odd, and it was run at breakneck speed from, from the off, really. Uh, there is, to a certain degree, uh, something to be said about the nature of this circuit. It needs to be safe. It's still a Grade 1 circuit. It held a Grand Prix only a matter of weeks ago. And in order for it to be safe, you've got to have gravel traps. You've got to have uh, runoff areas, high curbing in places, and grass as well. It's an old-school circuit and uh, rather unforgiving, but I kind of like that. Another one of the good guys, the gentleman drivers, John Schaumann. He's another pleasure to be around in this paddock, another one that just takes absolute delight in the opportunities to race. So the Malta Jakobsen car didn't half fly at certain points. That's it working its way through the chicane. Let's get some reaction from elsewhere, from GT3 this time.
We'll get to that as soon as we can. But uh, congratulations to GMB Motorsport, to Gustav Berg, who brought the car home, and Jens Moller. They will now be the championship leaders. They were second in the championship coming into this second round of the season after a win for Kasper Jensen and Kristen Paulsen in the opening round at Lucas Delay. So 55 drops to second, 44 will be the new championship leader by nine points. 35 to the other, oh, the second of the GMB Motorsport Hondas. Then Bullet Racing is Aston Martin, third ahead of A, of course, is Ferrari number 61. And uh, four Danes at the top of the charts. Gustav Bierch and Jens Moller, winners today. Kasper H. Jensen and Christian Poulsen, winners at Le Castellet. They finished in fourth position today. Then Stephen Patrick and Theo Nue, brilliant drive in Wasn't that it? bullet racing Aston Martin to close the gap. Andrea Montemini and Gino Forgioni will be fourth heading for Le Mans races three and four of the season technically round three but it'll be two separate 55 minute races at Circuit de la Sarre one midweek and one on Saturday morning as we move swiftly to the podium for the GT3 cars now and it's the third step of the podium for Emanuele Busnelli and Fabio Babini in a car that, that again they didn't expect to be racing here this weekend the Porsche will the Lamborghini be ready in time for Le Mans hopefully so second place going to Teo Nue and to Stephen Patrick in their bullet racing Aston Martin number 99 but it is a win again for GMB Motorsport but a different car Jens Moller and Gustav Berg in the 44 GMB Motorsport Honda NSX and it'll be the national anthem of Denmark Congratulations to GMB Motorsport as a team. They are now double winners in the Michelin Le Mans Cup in their debut season. Yeah, it's nice to hear the Danish national anthem, which we, we have lots of Danish drivers that are successful, not often Danish teams. Of course, we've heard it twice now in two races, but uh, it's one of the things we often miss is the variety of national anthems we hear across European racing. Luxembourg... Poland of late as well. Mm. It's been great to have it. And uh, a great result there. But you're quite correct, by the way, you said in the lead up to this, Tio Nue, what a uh, final stint from him. Before we forget, by the way, the LMP3 uh, podium, pretty convinced that matches the best ever results for two cars for United Autosports in this championship. Second and third did it in Barcelona last year. Right. Matched that and we've still got a looming shadow. Well, that's true, because... Don't forget this one, hurry, will we? No, certainly not. I, neither Graham nor I are sure that even now we have reached the official result. I mean, it won't be made official until probably tomorrow, but uh, it could be a late night in the stewards' office. Thank you for sticking with uh, our coverage today. We had to start a little bit late because of other dramas that have happened through the course of today's racing at Imola. Thankfully, no, no injuries to speak of, but just uh, red flags, safety cars, full course yellows that have rather put us back. But uh, we've got plenty on offer tomorrow, namely the four hours of Imola, which were the round two of the European Le Mans series. But delight for all of those associated with the teams on the podium in GT3. GMB Motorsport win it, bullet racing after their disappointment at Le Castellet, missing out on a podium after the race. They finished second here, and Ebby Motors on the third step of the podium after they took pole yesterday with Emanuele Busnelli. Let's catch up with Jens Muller from GMB. Fantastic result for you, Jens, winning here in Imola. Uh, it, it seemed pretty um, uh, plain sailing because you were there was a, an extended gap between you and the second place. But just take, a, take, take us how it went for you. Yeah, it was a very difficult race. Uh, a lot of full course yellow, safety car and so on. Uh, we pitted exactly when the safety car was coming on and uh, we were very, very lucky to get out. 
uh, in the right place and we Gusto created a big gap to the second car so it was just to be calm from there and take it home it was a fantastic job for the team for everybody and especially for Gusto it's his second race international first time P2 and P1 in the second race fantastic for him yeah congratulations well done yeah, Gustav Bjerg, just 18 years old from Anz in Denmark and uh, mightily impressive drive. Graham, thank you so much. I think you and I deserve a beer after all of that and there are a few others in the paddock likewise. Just the one. Uh, we'll see you at Le Mans and uh, don't forget ELMS tomorrow with an 11.30 local time start. Join us for that. Bye-bye. So what an evening of racing we had, uh, starting a little later than planned at 5.45 and now at nearly 8 o'clock here at Imola, we're drawing our coverage to a close. That is how you go, Michelin Le Mans Cup racing and there is way more of the season to come. Two races as part of the Le Mans itself. We look forward to that in four weeks' time. Bye-bye.